when you're putting that kind of package together uh, as a, as a as a company, um, the bean counters are normally driving the bus more than the engineers and the developers are there. They're, they they have to make a mark. They have to get it down to this number to sell it. And how do you get it there? Well, so we all find it out that most of the time in, in discount, I'm using the term discount because we're only kind. Um, one of the key places, it comes out of bearings. They'll sell you a lake and it's got a really nice lake and it's all good. But man, the first time you got to change the parts and the bearings go out, then you realize that that bearing is probably two or three steps down from what it really should have been. Uh, but it was a bearing to fit the size and such and such and such. But in order to bring that unit price down, they had to bring down an item. Um, I I had a bearing shop. that was a really great bearing shop on a corner from the house. And I'd walk down to people that bring me lathes to repair or or get my advice on stuff. And I, I'd say, don't don't go to Jet for that. Don't go to Delta for that. Don't go to Milwaukee for that. You know, get that bearing out and bring it to me. We're going to clean it. We're going to go down in a corner and find a replacement for it. And most of the time we go in and say, look, I need a replacement for this. Let's go to the book. And the guy looked at the book. And he says, well, I can get you this, but. I can't get you on this cheap, you know, and that, that's the first thing, you know, Mike would tell me is I can't get one this cheap. I got bearings two or three times better than this on a shelf back here. And, and his price would be much less than coming out of the catalog service that we would have to go to, to get a warranty part. Cause you see the money had to come someplace. So a lot of it's not the manufacturer that, that drives the bus like it's not Laguna that drives the bus. It's the bean counter that drives Laguna. Um, and I'm not now, 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 now I'm going to set everybody straight on bean counters. So accountants <laughs> work. Accountants <laughs> work with. They work with historical data. And so, so I'm I'm talking. You know, as 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 a corporate accountant from Fortune 500 company. All right. So the people. So the engineers and, and the tool design engineers, they're the ones that are working with the purchasing department, telling the purchasing department to go out and buy such and such part at such and such spec at such and such ASMT, blah, 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 blah. The accountant's got nothing to do with it until the quarter, quarterly financials has got to be done. And then we say, oh, looky here. And then from there, I'll filter it down to the cost accountant and say, hey, Go do an analysis on this program and see where all this money is coming from. But that's all historical data. The bean counters ain't got nothing to do with it. No, they got all it. The they beans, they only get so many beans. beans. And by the way, all the beans get counted by the manufacturing folks. We just tell them to go count it. We don't count it. <clears throat> but yeah, and, and you got to look at how much waste goes on in, in some of these oh, businesses. It's, it's terrible. Uh, I was. A guy that he he comes by here every day. He's a, uh, I think his job is to flatten sidewalks because that's all he does is walk by. Um, but he shops at Home Depot or one of those places. He's got friends over there, and he's always he's he's approached me a couple of times. Hey, um. I got a jigsaw. If you're looking for a good deal on a jigsaw, I got a jigsaw. It was shoes, but it came back. And, you know, I can get this thing for like $10. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, how are you going to get this jigsaw for $10? I got a friend, you know, and, and you know, and it came back and it's a throwaway. You know, the 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 guy comes in for the factory. Yeah, yeah, all right. Check it off. Throw it away. The throwaway doesn't get thrown away. It goes into the pile, and then a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend gets it, and he's one of those friends of a friends. And yeah. he he comes by with all kinds of things. And I mentioned the jigsaw because I have the, the, the my my the grounds guy here repaired my fence, and he hadn't trimmed a couple of boards on the bottom, and. Um, and I was I was out there looking at it the other day, and I said, you know, if I, if I still had a jigsaw, uh, I'd lay down here and just saw that off. And we were talking about it, and he says, why don't you, 
I can get you a deal on a jigsaw. I don't want a jig. I had a jigsaw. When, here's the deal. I'm not supposed to have that. I'm not supposed to do this. You know, I'm coming up with ideas for, for Tommy to come over and finish up some work. But, you know, quickly, I can get you a jigsaw. Yeah, uh, last year it was to get you a rotor hammer if you want to drill to put some holes in to put the handrails on. You know, um, always got a deal. Always got a deal. Shop in the dumpster at the Home de at the Home Depot and Lowe's, and that's where I lost this, folks. Right there, that shortcut the back door of those big box stores kills our industry. It does. Those so those. You don't find them being thrown away at the hardware store. I I had to uh, when I was working building the uh, uh, vacuum chuck. Uh, I was having to work with the spindle on my uh, uh, grizzly, so I gave him a call, and for just a little over a hundred dollars, I have a spare spindle and uh, uh, two extra bearings and uh, one other item so if i had messed up my spindle working on the vacuum chuck i had a spare one put in it so i thought that was pretty good so if i mess up the threads in some future date i can fix it spare so i just did a deep dive into what's wrong with the grizzlies that they recalled it's the banjos are snapping. Uh, and the face plates are breaking. The face plates and the face plates they offer us are breaking, yes. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with the cutting tool. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the cutting tool was a guy, us. You know, we were right. And tool rest breaking. Where's the money coming out you know, when you got to bring the cost down or something? Well, it's actually the banjo that's breaking up the tool rest. So, the actual oh. banjo. Oh, wow. That's yeah. that's ugly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that can that's be a death really, That's one. highly dangerous. They yeah. said yeah. Had four reports of it breaking and one injury because of it. Probably. That might be the one that got reported. You got to consider that's the one that got reported. The other ones they just didn't talk about. Oh yeah. Right. But but you gotta think about, you know, what's what's the turner what is the turner doing to break it? <laughs> well it also I mean, it's it's when the they understand that it's when they're using the lathe at full capacity. So with the vibration that's really so, big on that damn thing when they on the faceplate and on the you know, and they're probably so, they might on the, on that 462, they have an articulating um, headstock banjo. Yeah, and so and and I know that I know that they didn't make it any better than than that one that I bought back in 2006. You can just tell if you were to extend that out. I mean, you could go like that, and that thing would just just bend. It had yeah, easily so, so easily this one is one the, and a half inch slop in it. That's because so this. This is the out the the outboard turning banjo. No, it's the regular banjo, it, but it, it's 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 extra long. So you, so it's it's extra long because it, the, it rotates out. Otherwise, it sits on top of the uh, yoke. Because the the headstock rotates. It's not outboard turning. The re, the yeah. headstock rotates, so they made the banjo extra long to be able to yeah reach that yeah. far out. So what we're talking about here is is poor customs. Well, what? yeah, it's it's oh, yeah, shoddy, shoddy cast, and plus, and lo and their face plates. So they got, they got a hold of a bad batch of something. But again, I mean, what is what is the Turner doing to get a catch to be that violent? Well, they said also that the whoever we the ones that have reported it, they said they were using it at full capacity, so that could mean anything. Right. Something yeah. big on the lathe, that's for sure. Right. And those lathes, you know, so so they don't have variable speed. Oh, okay, it's a reeds drive, but I can take it down, you know, the first gear. Yeah. First gear is 700 RPM. Yep. Yep. The, 
the po- and, the and post that you, yeah the post that you put out today Dan, it, it, it was the grizzly with the reeves drive and low well, yeah, speed on on that is is around about 500 i think and if somebody is turning a real big piece outboard on that that's yeah. going to put some enormous pressure on the banjo anyway Oh yeah, and the face plate like with that 462, which is which is what's in that picture on that post that I did. So that's the 0462. That's the one that I started with. If you barely put a piece on there that's out of balance, even call it you know, eight inches in diameter, that thing would dance all over the place. Oh yeah. So I I couldn't imagine putting a a a a 12 inch piece on there out of balance. And and trying to max that out just so you also hey, have to, a lot of, you know, the lot majority of, of these the majority of these new people how are they learning they go to YouTube the majority of the YouTube uh, channels out there all you know three out of six they're turning with with poor technique poor presentation and using the wrong tools. Yeah. If I can turn it, it'll turn. You know, uh-huh. you know, if I can make it do it, it'll do it. How big can you turn on that? I got that question so many times when people get a lathe. How big a ball can I turn? You know, right. if you're going to buy the a lathe based upon how big a ball you can turn. You're buying a lathe for the wrong reason. Oh, yeah. Uh, because the... the my, my, we've been having a lot of discussions with the shrink about getting if if they if we think about my getting back into fooling with things and tools again and we I don't know why we traveled in that road the other day but she said would you go back to get the lake again and I said maybe but I'd have to be very careful about what I pick. Because that's a you really want to keep growing hobby. Um, would never be satisfied with a Jet Ten Fourteen Mini Lathe. You know, you, you, once you turn on it, you you know how big a piece can you put on a Ten Fourteen? You know, can you max it out? You know, uh, this this this. I turned ink pens on a um, drill press that I modified, laid over, and used the drive system. Just to, for doing pens with a pen kit, I modified all the all the everything. I made my tool rest, the 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 tail stock, everything. I made it. I built it all right there on that thing, just for one particular reason to do freedom pens. This was twenty years ago, and um, it was a lay a drill press, a Milwaukee Delta drill press from the nineteen forties that was gifted to me from. Uh, an old man across the street that rebuilt lawnmowers. And it, it had a quarter horsepower motor on it. It was awesome. Awesome. And all of a sudden, I had to have a bigger lathe. And, you know, I'd already had a lathe. Besides this, and then besides the bus. We all go through this. So when you get somebody asks a question, how big a ball can you turn on that? You, you got it in the wrong direction. We've got some awesome demonstrators, some awesome gallery folks that show us their work here on Worldwide Wood Turners. And if you saw what they turn on, you'd say, how the hell does he do that? Um, Because I've seen them. I've seen pictures in his shop. And I've said, why would that guy who does that kind of work have that kind of lathe? And the answer is pretty simple. Because he knows what he's got. He knows the restrictions. He knows how to limit what he uses is on. And he's got some damn common sense. Boom. That's Especially it. Especially the later. Yeah. He's not letting the little head overthink the big head. I mean, he's, you know, I'm be polite about that. But that's the thing is, it's not that I got, you know, I got this big machine. I got to turn this big work. Uh, I got to do this. I got to do that. You don't got to. And I'm seeing some beautiful art. We've we have got members that show us work that is top of the line gallery art pieces. And we all, when we see it, when it come when they come up on gallery, and I go, 
Ooh, y'all do that? You do that. I hear you do it. And it's it's not uncommon. And you, and you go, wow, how in the heck do you do that? But if you would go back and look at the demos he's done for us or pictures from his shop and you look at the lake that he's got and the gear he's got and the operations and what's he doing, he doesn't have the biggest, finest, best-built lake in the entire world. He just got one that he understands limitations to and he honors those limitations. He respects through. He respects them, and he doesn't try to push the button too far. It's like you don't go drag racing in a, in a Volvo, you know, or a, a Yugo, pardon me. But, you know, that, that's the way I look at it is I've some of the best equipment I've owned has been 1935, 1940-ish lace that were made during the war, before the war went to schools and things like that where they were made for being used by people who didn't have a lot of training. So it was very basic equipment, very good bearings, heavy stock, um, low drive motors, a lot of steps. Um, I had one odd, a, a lathe came me one time. It was Milwaukee Delta lathe a lady gave me. And when my neighbor came to look, he said, What'd you get it at a pulley sale? <laughs> it had about seven steps in this thing. <laughs> you could change it to get the steps. You could go from about 120 RPM to uh, to 5,000 RPM by just moving belts around. And uh, noisy, cool. Um, and, and and Bill tells me, you know, you get some some uh, some belt. Spray, you know, you know that belt dressing and spray it on it. I said it'd be about a foot deep at my ankles, but I'm gonna get it all dressed up. But that lathe was awesome, and I gave it to a guy that did spindles. He, he came to me. He was a member of the club, and his lathe got ruined in a storm, Hurricane Katrina, and he wanted to go back to turning spindles. And uh, I gave this lathe to him. And he used it for probably another 15 years before he passed on. Don't know where the late late went and then, but it was, it was bulletproof. It really was. Had the old type slice, um, power lay, um, blade on it. He'd, he'd, he'd never get anybody to approve or work on it. You know, it, it was, but it was a tool that worked if you respected it. And unfortunately, we don't get that. It's that comic courtesy of doing pieces and not having a, I got to go big, you know, it's, you know, more power. Hey, power. Hey. hey, I turned on one, one uh, nearly the same lathe about 25 years. I know. I've seen your lathe. I'm not talking about you <laughs> when I was referencing that work. But I've seen your life and I've seen your work. And that's what I'm talking about. What people use. Stay, you know, you gotta you gotta work within your limits. You know what your limits are. You know what that lake will do for you. You respect it, you use it, right? You honor it, you don't overwork it, you don't beat it to death. Um, it's not like, hey, I can get a bigger piece on there, you know. It's, I know what will happen if I put that bigger piece on there. It's going to walk across the room. Um, that's, I, I used to, I loved it when I was in in a, the Bayou Wood Turners and guys would come in and say, what can I do to weight my lathe down so it doesn't bounce? Uh, trim your wood better. You know, shape it up, balance it better. Um, come up with something, because if you got such a problem that that lathe is walking across the shop floor, it's not weight. It's your problem. And very soon, it's not going to be that. It's going to be bearings and the catch that destroyed the grizzly, you know, or the uh, bed or whatever. Cement on it. Yeah. It's 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 We're not built to do that. It's never it was, that wasn't in a function test. They didn't put a, a, a 800 pound block on air to, to see and, and stuff. And I had guys that asked me, could I? Could have cut them 20 pieces of rebar six foot long so they could put it in the bottom of the bed of the lake to keep to keep it stabilized. And how much weight do you have on yours? 
I don't have any. Well, what do you? Yeah. No, I don't have any. I don't have any counterbalance. Why? Well, I have an electric chainsaw and I trim the ears off until I get it where I wanted it, and then I drive the speed and the cutter and all the other stuff until you get it where it's supposed to be. Yeah, but I don't want to take that long. Bing. No. Uh, that's wrong. <laughs> my my shot my shot smith had a two by four frame around oh. it so it wouldn't hit the wall. Yeah, I spent I, I chased, around the, I right chased spent, around the room. Yeah. I spent my first five years of wood turning on my shop smith and it taught me a lot. You got it. it limitations. It taught me how to do light cuts. It taught me a lot. And before I even bought an actual lathe and I I still have my shop smith. I use it for other stuff, but Especially the drill press. I like it to use it as a drill press. But... Oh, the horizontal drill press is fabulous. The, oh, yeah. There's nothing made to do that. No. I had to quit because I, I, I entered a kaleidoscope. I won't tell where it was, but in one of the great magazines. And uh, and I won first place and everything was great. And I was going to be on the cover of the magazine and things were great. And after about four or five talking back and forth to somebody in California, they said, would you turn that on? I said, a shopsmith. He said, really? We'll get back to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I should have said anything but a shopsmith. But anyway, I still got it. I, I don't like anything about it, but it does so much. Nothing else will do it. That's David Ellsworth, what he started on. Yeah. It, was, it was a shopsmith. Yeah, if he mm. goes around. I used to chase that thing around the room and it it started bouncing and you just kept turning and you finally got it round. But I had a good friend who used to say he's gonna go out and dance with Cadilda Cotilda out in the shop. So <laughs> <laughs> and uh he actually he put a load he put a, a, a an anchor in the floor and put a load binder, <laughs> a snap down load binder, and put a load binder on a band it down on the floor. And I said, fine, you know what that's doing to the bearings? He says, Hey, I work for the government, I can get bearings free. <laughs> mm -hmm. I never thought of that. That's a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> I put uh, I screwed down a board on each end of the shop smith to keep it from running. It yeah. helped <laughs> till you got it so out of balance, it was jumping straight up and down, and then you couldn't stop it. So well, it'll only slow down to what, 750 or something? 750 yes, RPM? Yeah, uh, something. It's pretty fast. 725. Yeah, yeah, and every time you put anything on it, there was at least a bit out of balance. You couldn't slow it down enough to, to make it. You, know, you, know, you got it round, you had to follow the thing around the room. So That's one of the things mm -hmm. it taught me about big time. Yeah. So I was like, all right, so I got to make my blanks really well balanced before I put it on any lathe, really. Mm -hmm. And I still do yeah. that. Yep, I won't. Yep. I won't just put some crappy lump-sided thing on my lathe. I make sure it's good and balanced before I even start on it. Who well, you got to prove something to? That's yeah. You know, bottom line, who you got to prove something to? Yeah, that's why I got an eighteen-inch bandsaw and stuff, so I can make really nice balanced planks. Yeah. Did anybody have the uh, speed reducer for the shopsmith? Oh yeah, I have it. Sure. Yeah, you want to buy one? I had one. <laughs> that went cheap. I hated you that thing while turning, though. It always stalled out on me. It was like ten to one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah something like that. It was unbelievable slow. Yeah, hmm. it would go really slow, but when you tried to turn a bowl or something on it, it would just stall out on you. Hmm. The gears, I actually stripped one of the gears in it because it just couldn't take the. Oh like, really? The turning would would do. I knew I knew a really great doctor, Doc Lejeune, uh, Doctor Francis Lejeune, who was a real good artist, and and he Doc passed away at about ninety five. But he turned later in his life. He learned how to turn. I went over to one day to watch him work. Um, he invited me over, and he had a shopsmith, and he had a reducer on it, and he picked up his hollowing tool to go down and start hollowing out the end of a bowl. And I, I said, "Where'd you get that tool?" He said, "Ford." I, I'm looking at his tool. I said, Ford, and he says, yeah, they put him with every one of those cars when you got them. And he's, it's, it was a Ford tire iron. <laughs> steel was excellent tool steel. 
and he chucked it up. He 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 cut it off, put it on in a post at the ground and, and had a little ground little hook on it. And I mean, when he went in, it cut like there was nobody's business. It just sliced away. But I'm looking at all his tools. Most of his tools were shop made by him from things, the weird things, struts out of the supports for uh, the hatchback on a car were, were tooled out and made into hollowing tools and, and stuff. Um, but that was Doc. He was, you know, his daddy was one of the founders of Washington Medical Center where I go for my care. And he was, he was a genius man. And um, he had, a, he, they, he quit playing doctor at about 80. But he kept walking around the hospital taking care of people until he was over 90. Because that was his, 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 his thing. That's what he had to do. That's the kind of man he was. But awesome. He came up with some stuff. He he went to AAW one year. Um, yeah, goddamn Delirious. Showed off some things. Showed some things he created, you know, with some balance things and stuff that was like spinning tops that was hand driven by pistol drills that would spin for 10 minutes on a on a on a surface. Just zzz, 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 let it go and uh, knock it, you know, it, it took the table and that that floating top would go around. He had a ball. He, you know, he just had fun with it. And, and and that when you when you take everything else away and you just want to have fun with it, that's what makes a difference. He was he was great. He was a great turner. I but when he said Ford, I'm thinking, when I miss this Ford makes turning tools. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna check my local Ford dealers. Who are they on? Never um, know, do you? No. But the best, the best scraper I had came from Craftsman, um, of all places. Yeah. Hey, I'm uh, just today. I was packaging up uh, stickers. Yes, folks, these. And I see. I was paying attention to Facebook, and I, you know, let it y'all don't do Facebook, but I have to do something to keep my brain occupied. Um, a guy. Worked on his grinder this week. One of the guys on on, on a club, and he turned his grinder around, and changed it all, and then he finally finished it off by putting a white wood turner sticker on the back I of it. I saw that. He sure did. He sure did. Yep. Right, right, I saw that right, too. Right <laughs> in the middle, in the middle of the back, he put worldwide wood turner sticker, just just like that, and. That Made it yeah. work even better too after I put that it sticker did. on. Probably took the hum out <laughs> and, and everything else, and, and that's Balanced what happens. Up. So if yeah, you it took one it, of it these, took away that it took away that wicked bounce. You know, this one guy was talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so here's the deal, folks. If you put one of these on your lathe, the cutting and sanding and smoothing and all will be so much sweeter and so much better. I won't see you, you get completely catch free, but the amount will go down. It will because it sure in hell can't go up. <laughs> uh, but if you want, if you want some stickers, we have them. I, I put two packages together just now. But get this: of all the people in the club that didn't have stickers, would you believe Doug Rowe was one of them? <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. That outlaw, Doug Rowe. Called me two days ago. He says, Eddie, I've been meaning to get stickers. Doug was member number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we put this thing together, it was me and Doug and Ron Radliff and Ronnie and a few other folks. All in that one little group in the beginning when we decided this could happen. Doug was in the beginning. He should have gotten it online then. But I put some for, together for Doug and I'm sending him with a bill, a bill. Uh, but if you want some, I just put a package together for Todd Williams. He's out there by you, uh, Dane. Uh, oh, yeah. And you're in the world. The world. Uh, Reno, Nevada. Todd Williams. Oh, okay. That's close. Uh, yeah. He, uh, he, he, just got, he just ordered some by PayPal. And here's what you do. If you want them, there's 10 of these in the strip. Two, 10. And I'll put them in, in the number 10 envelope. I found no other way to mail them that works uh, that gets through the post office and it's usable. 
So I put them in number 10 envelope and I can send you 10 stickers and I'll do it for $5. That includes your postage to the United States. If it's got to go outside the United States, I need one more dollar because I got to pay as well. But I'll give you 10 stickers for $5. The details are on the front page of the world's greatest wood turning website. I'm not going to give you the name of the website. We're not going to do everything. Uh, but the world's greatest website for wood turning has got it on the front cover, on the front page, on how to order these stickers. And you can pay for them by PayPal, or you can mail me a check for the amount, and I'll send them on to you. Um, we're trying to get the word out. Second is, um, I got a, I, I found I had a whole package of these Starbond shirts, uh, which is good because my wife has made me throw away all, all my old T-shirts. Well, not making it for boy when you go to the laundry, don't come back. Um, the uh, but I, I wanted, I'm thinking about getting the shirts done with the artwork on it, the worldwide wood turner's artwork. And uh, Scott put that together for us. Uh, no, who did the duh? Yeah, Scott, Scott put that, yeah, Scott T put that together for us. And here's the deal you want a shirt done, it's a t shirt, a sweater, a vest, a, whatever you want. You you send that item to us at the details on our website and uh, the charge that details on our website. We will screen print it and then mail it back to you. Details on our website. And they'll put it, it gets front and back. Last week we saw Brenda had a couple of pieces done. But that's how you get it if you want to screen print it like this is. Then Bob Greenstead says, but I know the screen print stuff. I'm going to step up a little bit. Well, Bob stepped up a little bit embroidered. Yeah, because that's that's Bobby. Steps up a little bit. So he got embroidered. Bob got the patterns done for residential embroidery or commercial embroidery machines. Three different grades of patterns, which I understand from the world's greatest seamstress, who's my wife, that they all work. All three patterns work. And you can get those free on our website. Get this. All that stuff is on the world's greatest website for returners. All of it. And it's all free. That's where you find the chat. That's where you find all the demos, all the details and everything else. Don't miss it. Dave Rhodes is our webmaster. He does an awesome job. This is the only site like it in the world. Hands down. No arguments. No need to discuss it any further. This is the place. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. So hey, Eddie. I'll, 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 I'll make one comment here. Uh, you know, you're talking about the embroidery shirts. You know, you can, uh, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the files there is for your home. You can embroidery at home. If you know somebody that has an embroidery machine, you know, your wife, your daughter, your cousin, whatever. But if you don't, you know, you can take that same, not that same pattern, but you can take uh, one of the three down to a local embroidery shop and have it done and that's what i did i had it done for 12 dollars. yeah i took yeah, i took so my, I took the pattern over and checked you out yeah so it's, uh, so it's cheap if you you know if you just want to do it you, you buy your own shirt and they'll put it on here for 12 dollars. so that's cheap enough yeah i got a brand new woolly vest that i want to for the winter and i want to have it on that vest and it's still sitting there waiting for my wife to get to it so it might go to the shop. <laughs> or, or you can have a sister-in-law that has the machine. And uh, we still don't know where I'm going to stick this one. <laughs> hey, Bob, we've had yeah. embroidery. So with, with the, the front patch being $12, so I would imagine if you wanted to get it get it on the back of your shirt as well, you know, like the screen printing, that'd probably be another, what, 20 I don't, I don't big. know, you know, everybody's different, you know, their prices are different and screen print might be cheaper. I, I have no idea. Yeah, I would imagine it would just, be uh, with the, the larger size logo, huh? Right. Yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah. you take it in and you ask them because the place that I went to, I, I checked three places and they were all about $12 yeah. to actually. Well, what, what I'm, well, kind of what I'm trying to do is to, you know, do a cross comparison that we're correlating we're correlating the same price for the screen print because the screen prints for the big logo on the back plus up sure. front for twenty five, sure. and twelve dollars or thirteen dollars, you know, from 
what you were able to do just for the the one on the front, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah I had no no deal. Just check it out. Yeah, we got the, we have it available. You have it. You know, we give you. We got three options for you there, folks. There you go. Definitely. Yeah. Want to get it done? You can get it done if you want to get a get a shirt and support mm -hmm. the logo. And it's great for when you're out at uh, the craft fairs or the local festivals and whatnot. Uh, you're walking around. And you can you'd be surprised how much business you can generate. Um, I know since I've been sporting mine uh, for the last probably close to a year. Um, it's definitely helped me out on some custom work, on some art pieces. So, if you, you know, it's a small investment, you know, to just to advertise that you're a wood turner. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, when you you've all experienced this, when somebody says, "What do you do?" I'm a wood turner. What is that? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it's it's a break. You know, I got no lie. I've got a brain disease. Okay, it's it's there. It's been there for nine years. In fact, nine years ago today, they first time they sat me up in the bed, put my feet over the side of the bed. Radliff sent me a photograph that my daughter posted of me nine years ago today. Um, but I, I keep getting a different series of doctors to try to help me through some of this. And the one I met with the other day, really nice lady, she says, you're a what? I said, I'm a wood turner. And I pulled a pen out and I said, uh, turn things like this and this and this and this. And she said, do people do that anymore? <laughs> and yeah. And some, you, you feel like you, sometimes you, you're a barbarian that came in off the mountain, you know, or whatever. Um, but then I'm you totally, think, I'm totally okay with that, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah and at the same time, then you think, but you know what? I'm doing something. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie, if you want to impress them, give them a stool sample. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. I wish I, wish I could remember that. <laughs> Especially to a young doctor. This, yep. My doctor said, when you leave, I'm going straight to the lab. <laughs> hey, you yeah. know what? My last craft show I did, I had a bunch of them. Yeah. And all, all the younger people, I had to explain it to them. Oh really? Oh yeah, right. I'm serious. Then they're like, guys, oh, God. one lady. Guys, I, I, down. I'm a fan of, <laughs> of of a picture's worth a thousand words, so I carry at least three hundred pictures of my past turnings on my phone. So I said, yes. let me show you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh yeah, I've, I've got my Duxbury stool sample right here. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, that's yeah. a real one. I see it. Yeah. Damn. My, my uncle used to make those in three-piece chicken dinners, which is a little tiny box. Had a slide top. Had three pe three kernels of corn in it. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you well, hey, Eddie, we, we got to tell somebody this. Your, uh... When you tell somebody this, the the first thing that will come to mind with me is is, but I do something. Exactly. You know, it, 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 and. I, I create things and I'm using this. And, you know, there's so many people today that don't concede that's what we were here for and that's what we're supposed to do. Think it through. And I was, when when we were talking, with my wife and I were in the car the other day talking about driving, going someplace and and she was all antsy and everything. She always is. She's, she's a she's a traffic Nazi, um, and and she's all nervous. I said, count the five. And I'm I'm stealing this from Sue. Count the five. Yep. She says, Why? And I said because that puts you in neutral. So if we all think about that before we start something, just count the five. What's up, Dane? Well, we got a we got a few folks coming in for gallery, so I thought we'd jump over and start doing some gallery here. Yeah, but I don't know who who is eight seven two nine four five. Who is I don't that? know, but I'm hoping he'll change his name. Go on, go into click on participants, and then click on your name, and then click on rename, and put your name as Bob, Harry, or Jim. That way, uh, Miss Bob, have you your name? Yeah, there's no doubt. Or you can. Or you can put down, you know, what 
you know, was put down on your birth certificate, you know, whatever you, you feel like. Dugs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let's see. Let's go over to Wayne. Hey, Wayne. Oh. Oh, no, he's not there. He must want to get a, get a refill on his wine. Not for a sandwich. I'm sure he'll be right back. I'm sure he will. But in the meantime, we'll just go to someone else. Let's go to... We've got a bunch of folks got things up tonight. Nice gallery coming. Come on, folks. We'll introduce Ruby, you. Where are you at? There you are. You guys ever use stepper motors with your turning? Stepper motors? Again? No. Do you ever use stepper motors with your turning? Don't follow you. No, no. 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 Like a linear, like a linear cut to do like over the top of the lathe. You mean a secondary cutting machine? Like a router? Yeah. Yeah, where you'd either put a router or a Dremel on it to do yeah, like yeah, a... we make all yeah, we there's there's all kinds of jigs out there that folks um make and use to embellish your pieces. Showed one we last showed week. week. Yeah, we showed yeah, a couple of them week. last week. Yep. 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 And all those demos right. are on my website. Ruby, you're up. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> Here's my Christmas ornament. Yes, nice. nice, Ruby. Looks good. good. Six. Got a little bit of texturing in a couple spots up here and down here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are six pretty. holes drilled in it. All Ooh. right. Good to see six pretty. holes. You must have drilled that after you had it round, right? Yes. Yeah. When, it, when it was still in a cylindrical <laughs> form. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I like that. Nice. Still Very cylindrical nice. form, yes. Did you hollow it? Well, the holes kind of hollowed it. Well, I know, but yeah, okay. So that was all <laughs> only hollowing you did. Okay. <laughs> right. That was the whole thing was made mm -hmm. from one piece of wood. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that's Pretty. nice. Beautiful. Very nice, Ruby. Oh. Okay. Matt, nice didn't show one like that right. last week, Matt. I showed it in pieces. I'll show it finished okay. this week. All right. <laughs> well, and I should have done what Ruby through. did. I should have done exactly what Ruby did because I w I didn't drill mine until the ball was, it was already a ball and my drill bits wandered and such. Mm. Oh, thank you, Ruby, for helping that out. Okay. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> I see nice. Wade has come back, so you can catch him again now. Yeah, yeah. I was going to go back to him after you. All right. Great, Ruby. Very nice, Ruby. Thanks. Thank you, Thank Ruby. Thank you for the compliments. Looks nice, Ruby. Wayne, let's try you again. Oh, yeah. Better the second time round, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I did this tonight. Oh, my goodness. Mm, pretty. It's a wall hanging. Could be a shield. Uh, done with uh, now uh, the back is very plain wow. but the front uh, this has been done with Joe Sonia's iridescent colours with um, also some of the um, chameleon colours from Emma oh, yeah. um, the, the tiny turner as well that's pretty real nice Thank you, that guys. Beautiful, Wayne. Very nice, Wayne. Very, very pretty, Wayne. I like the colors. Cheers, guys. Really pretty. It was, it was a nice. It was a nice live, also. Sure was. Well, thank you. All right, let's go to Charlie. Charlie. Hey. Yes, sir. You finding me? Yeah, I got you. There we go. You must have been waving. Well. <laughs> I ain't got no clocks to show this time. <laughs> but my wife and I were walking around Hobby Lobby and she said, I need some candle holders. And you said, I can make some of those. 
That's what I said. Well, she actually <laughs> said it. Pretty. Okay. That, that one is silver maple. Okay. Nice. This one is birch. That's mm. pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. This one, nice, Charlie. The, I'd had it sitting in for about two years, and it still cracked after I made it. So I filled mm. it with brass. Okay. Nice touch. Yes, nice. Was your wife happy coat, with them? Coat, pardon? Was your wife happy with them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This was the last one that I made. Well, second to the last one I made. Oh, I like that. This was red oak. Mm. And as I, I was finishing cutting it off the lathe, there was a knot that I didn't know about. But it, it worked. It's called it's character. A feature. It's, it's a feature. Yep. yep. Natural. Very flow. nice, Charlie. They're all covered with tongue oil. There you go. About three, four coats. Very good. Be, be sure to put That's a metal cup. Be, be sure to put a metal right. cup in them. I had a friend that almost burned the kitchen table down. Mm. <laughs> it was a friend. You, you, may, story. you may laugh about that, but if you don't put a metal cup in them, and somebody's house does burn down. They can come back and sue you. Oh, I, I know. That. I've been in the craft business for almost 30 years. So now I, I, one of the things I got out of in the craft business is we quit making baked goods because if somebody even gets an upset stomach, yeah. mm -hmm. they can come back against you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's that's really hurt if you're not, if you're, if you're not <clears throat> taking, taking the proper insurance. Yep. Yeah, boy. All right. Thank you, Charlie. All right. Thank let's you. Get Doug. Hey. Hey, guys. It's good to be back. I was out of town for two days, and it feels like I've been out of town for a month. Um, but I did have a couple of things. Um, fixed up a, a, a video so because I wasn't going to be here to do my live yesterday. So uh, that's what I did for the video. Uh, another ribbon spiral, spiral ribbon. Um, got the uh, uh, chameleon powder on it and if you get the light right it is as red as it can be um, there in the picture you're seeing both the green and the red I think um, but it's, yeah gold. that red gold. I see a gold too gold okay red. well in person it's red and green uh, is it you know, it's, it's crazy it's crazy. I, I love it. It looks great. <laughs> Can't wait to make something to put that on. It's it's still on the, the tenon, so I can turn some more. I can uh, put some more finish on it, whatever it takes. I like so, the ball uh, on the end of it. I'll, I'll, yeah, well, ribbon there. That's kind of... Can I, can I just say that the um, the chameleon colors that Doug is using, that he used on there, they are available um, in the U.S. If you just go on to the Tiny Turner website, the are the available chat. there to order. Put it in the chat. Yep. Yeah, okay. I, I think that uh, I think that Jeff Hornung on the Walnut Log also sells Emma Cook's Chameleon. Oh, she uh, yes, he does. Yeah. Je yeah. Jeff yeah. does does sell um, Emma's um, Chameleon uh, flakes as well. Yeah, might save you on shipping there. Yeah, sure. definitely, definitely. The the uh... Other thing I did this week, I, I had uh, broken my bandsaw blade, and I had one left. I put it on, and it was so dull, I couldn't hardly cut anything. I even got a, a little thin piece of pine and tried to run it through, and it was slow to cut that pine. So I ordered some new ones, uh, much better quality. They were two or three times the, the price, but uh, much, much better um and, and i recut one of the pieces i had tried to cut it was a half log or a log that i cut in half and uh the bandsaw was so dull that the curve through this half log made a big big bend it wandered so badly so when i got the new ones i said let's see if it'll straighten that up it did and so i turned a nice little walnut bowl this is one that i 
one of the walnut halves. It's uh, four and three-eighths across, I think, uh, an inch and a half tall. Um, yeah, we can see the, the uh, yeah, the profile. Got a little, uh, about an eighth inch or so foot on it with my normal stuff on the bottom. But it came out real nice, just a wax finish. So we're having a good time with it now. Bandsaw Worksman's got a sharp blade. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I don't think Sue's in yet, but, um, you know, one of the safety things that we have talked about is making sure our tools are sharp, our blades are sharp. Bandsaw yeah. is one of the worst. Um, if it's dull, it can be a dangerous animal. So uh, make sure those bandsaw blades are sharp. Yeah, Sue says she's under the weather tonight. She won't be with us. All right. <clears throat> But you're right, and you know you're you you're when you start into a business ball with a dull blade, human nature says, "I want to make it go." Right. I want I want to I want to I want to keep going. I'm going to make it. Go. That that you you you're really opening up the door for being hurt. Absolutely. So, yeah. There's a guy in Australia. I watched his video today. Um, he, on his right hand, he's got a big. Uh, uh, splint kind of deal with us another one on the inside and his index finger has one on it so he's got three splints on his arm uh his other three fingers are bandaged up but his index finger is being kept straight because they don't want him to bend it too far because it stretches the tendons um it, uh, particularly in that finger he just about about 99 percent severed that finger they were able to reattach it and so he's got he's 12 weeks out of the shop now uh, all because of a dull bandsaw blade. So ooh, ooh. that was that was his uh, word. Okay. This is what happened, and I want you all to know this. So be careful. Right, Thank I've you. just put a I've just put a link into um, Emma uh, the Tiny Turner's mm -hmm. um, website. But when when you're talking about things like um, the, the, you particularly mentioned Doug about Australia, there is a guy. Uh, in Australia, called Delbas Timbers. Mm. Um, now, this is a guy who has got very short arms and not very man many fingers, and he turns absolutely some amazing stuff. Right. Right on. Thank you. Thanks for just, putting just, that in, in the chat. Yeah, the, just, I just thought I'd mention that. Okay. Absolutely. Right on. Appreciate it. All right, let's uh let's go to let's go see what Billy Burt's got going on. Hey Billy. Hey everybody, let's see if this will work. My network is saying that I don't have a very stable connection, so <clears throat> hopefully you can hear me. I finished okay. some I, I finished the profiling of my first ribbon finial that I was doing on my uh I did started on a live the other day. If, I guess two weeks ago now, but I wanted to profile it such that it starts off thicker and gets mm -hmm. thinner as you go. And I've got iridescent paint on it, three different colors. I painted it with a, a brush. I should have broke out my airbrush. It'll look better, but a couple of coats of lacquer on it. I'm not quite finished, but it's coming along and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging it. This would be a, birdhouse ornament when it's done oh cool very good very but good very nice purples blues and reds thank you oh, yeah. but i'm I'm kind of happy with it so far good stuff that's <laughs> pretty much all i, I got that's done what i did with, that's what i did with my finial billy was um well one i did a smaller diameter bore and then you know did the taper you know larger at the bottom and right going to much smaller up at the top mm -hmm. and i did a tighter tighter you curl did. on Give it a flame yeah, yeah. Right. I think that I, I, I like the look of the going thinner as you go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It just takes sleep. a little just takes a little more time. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. <laughs> Very good. Thanks. All right. Let's go. Bob Grinstead. Come on down. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, can you see me or not? Yeah, yeah. I think you can see me. The uh, I made another one of these bowls. This one is walnut, uh, segmented uh, with the crosses in it. Yeah, that's There's all. a uh, floating 
floating bottom. But uh, I don't know uh, which one I like best. Uh, you know, either the walnut or the maple one. Oh my! You know, they both they both look pretty good. They just uh, they're both gorgeous. Yeah. Well, thanks. But I, I think they turned out fine. I like the maple. I do. I do too. I think I. I it stands yeah. out more. You know. Right. I like them both. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, anyway, I, mean, I, like I, would, I wouldn't throw the walnut one away. I mean, but... <laughs> no, actually, these are going to go in an auction for the club. We're having a uh, Christmas auction, so uh, they'll just auction these two pieces off. But uh, but yeah, anyway, those are fun to make and they're easy to make. I I put the instructions, uh, the uh, the cut sheet out there on our Facebook page if anybody wants it. But, but that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Mr. Duxbury. Hey, Jim. Ooh, ooh Amy. Let me do a screen share here. Yes. Um, first off, uh, <clears throat> these are from years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. These were taken with a <clears throat> a Maverick camera. Maverick camera. Remember those? You were, I don't know, 250. Yes, I, yes, I remember them. 250K or something. Uh, anyway, uh, these are pieces that are, uh, it's four pieces turned, glued together. This would be the center, and they would all be glued around it. And you turn the center out of it, and then you turn around and glue them back. Oh. And uh, it's got a vial down the middle. And uh, then I ran them through the router and I don't know, whatever else, but turned out kind of fun. Uh, we, we had a heck of a time. We couldn't sell these things in a craft show anywhere. And uh, <laughs> it ended up, I had about four of these kind of things. And you won't believe it. At one craft show, my wife said, this is another piece. One craft show, my wife said, you know, we're not taking these home. And we sold all four of them. I, it was like I'm out of the blue. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, this is a this is a contest that the club used to have. You can see this is a square corner, and there's a 45 here. This other piece went on the end of it. They gave you about a two-foot section of, uh, I think it looks like maple, but I think it was poplar. But anyway, I turned it a bowl. I turned this thing around, glued it back together, turned a bowl out of it, cut it in half, flipped it over, and I put a brass side on this side. <laughs> you see the background? That's our old chair. Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh, that, th this side was stainless steel. You can't see that. Mm -hmm. The other side was brass. Yeah, there's the brass this corner. Anyway, a lot of work in those, Jim. Yeah, there is. Yeah, <clears throat> lots of fun. That was on a shopsmith bouncing around. Yeah, yeah it was. All right. <laughs> oh, here's a shopsmith again. Uh, I did a couple demos, but uh, this gets so messy, uh, you have to beg to come back. I, I, <laughs> anyway, I, I turned some carrots and radishes, and uh, I've done apples and uh what are the other ones? Uh, kohlrabi and uh, up, anyway, this is turning a radish, <clears throat> and uh, that's turning a carrot. I made a whole salad tray for one of the wood turning cubs. That's another. But that was messy. <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, if you do it on somebody else's lathe, they, they never have you back. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> anyway, that's it. Uh, these are chess pieces. Uh, some of these are like the core of an apple. Uh, some have loose ring. Oh, here's one with a loose ring on it. Um, I don't know if you can hold them up. They're all different. They're... That's fun. That's a fun, yeah. And you can eat all the shavings. It's really kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at, uh, at Campbell's Hands on Retreat, one of the people who was teaching a skew class uh, taught it with you started off with a skew and carrots. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, a skew does a potato unbelievable. You can. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
You can peel potatoes with that thing in minutes. Um, and get those curly, curly Q uh, fries, you know, the, you, you can just peel those off. They, anyway, this is a wall hanging out of uh, walnut. Um, it's probably about six by 15. And uh, this is the back of it. Oh, good luck. Very nice. That's it. I made five of those things and I sold four of them. I, I did, this is the only one I got a picture of. Uh, they sold instantly. That's it nice. for me. All right. Thanks, Jim. Great. All right. Let's go to Leonard. How are you doing, Leonard? You're skipping me, Dane? Um, I must have. I'll come back to you. <laughs> Sorry. He's, he's skipping so, a few. Um, That's all right. So I've been messing around. As I said before, um, I got all these two by four cutoffs. So I started messing around with stuff, trying to figure out what to make from them. Um, just trying to get used to handling the tools, different patterns, just kind of going around different shapes. Um, and then online, I was poking around and I Jeez. found some tea lights uh, that are all different. They're about 80 cents a piece. So I made a bunch of different ones, just kind of messing around. Um, and then. So the tea lights are like succulents? Yes, succulents and, and cacti. Yeah. Um, right. And then. I somebody last week was talking about making a um, using a, a scroll saw, which is where I come from. And then somebody else had talked about making um, a potpourri box. So that's what I did. Um, it's a piece of elm um, and came out pretty nice. Um, mm -hmm. had a few little problems. Um, but one of my best sellers as a, a scroll saw was always the tree of life. So on the top, I scroll sawed the tree of life. Very nice. That's um, very nice. It's very nice. Not, good. not very tight fitting, but uh, you know, patterns seem to match up pretty close. There you uh, go. A little more practice, and I'll get there. Look, looks good. <laughs> Thank you. Not everybody likes a tight fit, you know. Some people, <laughs> some people like to just pick up with one hand, just take the lid off of it. Yeah, well, I figured with a potpourri, you, you don't want it too loose because you hit it and you got a mask. Well, that's, yeah, that yeah. might be true. Well, Leonard, yeah. remember the, the the term that we learned last week? It's French, called a too loose fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, too loose. That's so, it. That's the, that's the French fit. Perfectly acceptable. It's, <laughs> it's, it's fit. named after the actual town. So no worries there. All right, let's go back to Matt here. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> no problem. So uh, I, I promise this is the last time I'll show these. So this is this is ornament number one. Uh, it's got the it's got the six holes in it. Uh, That's nice. And, and a ribbon finial. I got and I put it together. I showed this bit last time last week, but it uh, and you can see where my drill bits wandered a little bit because it was round. So that lesson number one from Ruby is turn it when it's still so, a cylinder. <laughs> um, ribbon finial with no decorations and then I finished painting this one I've been painting for weeks so this is this is turned this is all turned on the lathe like this and it, it's got the gold chameleon dust on the on there no oh, that's sweet with yeah. another ribbon finial very cool Matt so yeah, this is this is from an Alan Stratton video. So if you want to learn how to turn these, this is all turned. All this is turned. So he's uh, he's go look on his. I think his as wood turns. I think is his site. Yes. So go yeah, look on his is, site. As, as wood turns. That's right. Yep. So I got it, and that was that was pretty easy and a lot of fun. So uh, if, if you at all have the have the multi axis bug, that's a great piece to start. Now this one is for Dane. So I got this piece off the lathe tonight. So this is walnut. It just has a single coat of finish on it. And 
I did this on the front of it. Oh wow! Oh, so nice. nice. Jesus, that really wow. nice. Excellent, Matt. Tell us how you did that, man. That is so awesome. So, so the way I these it's are decals. Okay, I, wow. I printed them on an on an inkjet printer. <laughs> really. <laughs> And and the paint the white background is the rust oleum chalked. Now uh, I'm no kidding. Some, Krylon makes uh, Krylon makes a, a a chalked paint too, but the rust oleum works better. It looks better. Um, hmm. So I tried them both on test pieces of wood, and the, and the chalked works better than the chalk finish does. So, but and I tried two different kinds of 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 printer decal making things and. A couple of them came off when I was I put it back on the lathe to turn to turn the, this this rim off, so um, I had to redo that tonight and put some more finish on it. So it, it just has one coat of lacquer on it. It, it needs about eight more and maybe some uh, maybe some touch up on the uh, on a little bit of the edges. But I, I, I've always loved the the Delft blue painting oh, and porcelain it comes out of out of the Netherlands and. Uh, so I, I'm something making something like this has sort of been in the back of my head for literally years. So I was glad to finally get my act together and, and make it make it make it happen. So, very pretty. No, very, I've got to say very, that that is absolutely pretty. beautiful, Matt. It really is. Thank you. And, and I and I and I did it intentionally on on this piece of walnut so that it would really contrast with the white. So you know to show that it's actually wood. So. Y'all are the first to y'all are the first to see this. I haven't posted any pictures of it, so yeah, beautiful, yeah, Matt. Good job, beautiful. Matt. Thank you very much. So, and there's a and and right. there's a if if you start getting into this, there is an absolute ton of of this. I I've always loved this color blue too. So there's an absolute ton of sample images on for free on the internet that you can download and and print and so on and you know this is a, a huge wealth of, of things you can do with this so and it, you don't have it doesn't have to be blue it can be anything so it's it's a whole new sort of decoration options you can add to your pieces now mm -hmm. right very cool did you laser or did you 3d print um it is not 3d printed i have both an inkjet color printer and a laser color printer in the house um <laughs> The, the 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 one in the ones in the middle here used a an inkjet printer so this one this one this one and this one were done on an inkjet printer and the 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 ones on the periphery here were done on the uh, the laser printer and the laser printer one actually worked better uh let me see if i can if i can get this so there we go so this is the stuff i used and you just print it and uh, and you soak it in water a little bit and just slide them right off, just like we mm. used to make models when we were kids. So sure, that's nice. Could you, uh, right, Matt? Could you use a, a similar type of thing with the uh, vinyl with um, a cry cut or a cree cut, whatever you call it? Cricket, yeah. Um, well, you could. And, and matter of fact, like one of the one of the things that I did, they were they were cutting it out with with. Uh, with a crick with a with a silhouette cameo i have a silhouette cameo which is the same sort of thing as a cricket okay and and uh what they are is is basically uh computer cutters okay and they're yep. built for doing scrapbooking and things like that but you can make uh i've made uh yeah yeah kelly wants a demo i hear you kelly uh you know dane said the same thing about the demo and uh yeah you like my band-aid um it is uh and, and I thought about it, but there's an awful lot of painting and, and, and detail work. So I'm not sure it would make a good demo. I mean, I could, I, maybe I could do a video or something and do it that way. So, um, but anyway, uh, to get back to it, uh, this stuff worked better. And what you want is the water slide stuff. Mm -hmm. ah, this is falling out. And the reason why the water slide stuff works better is you don't have to reverse print it. So, um, you know, you basically just slide, you print it and then slide it right off and it's on a clear film. So if, if you look really close and I don't know if I can actually show this, but, but there is a you can see slightly, maybe you can see the, let me get this up close here. I don't know if you can see the film at all, but there's a slight little line, but maybe right there. Can you see it right there? Yep. 
there's a little film there that I, 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 I and I don't know, I, I'm thinking about uh, coming over it with paint or something and, and trying to, uh, you know, paint the edges or, or something to try and, and make those edges go away. But there's got to be a way to make those edges go away. So, um, uh, anyway, but like I say, that, you know, work in progress. This is the first time I've tried this. So, um, hey, Matt. Hey, yeah. work, in, work in progress, Matt. That is absolutely beautiful anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wayne. Did you get that? Yeah, I'm ecstatic while you're turning. Out. I'm sorry, repeat that. Did you get that band-aid while you was turning? Uh the band-aid <laughs> the band-aid is a good safety lesson. Okay. I got this from a Forstner bit on my drill press. I was making a holder for some for a tool rest, and I was, you know, moving fast. There was a lot of interruptions, and I, I didn't clamp it. I held it with my hands and it slipped out of my hand and <laughs> Part of my thumbnail got eaten by the. I by see the your name is not on the uh, Band Aid Brigade, so. Yeah, this is the first time you've seen one. Uh, <laughs> we, need, we need to add him there. Um, I'll keep an eye on this. Yeah, you yeah, might it, want to put I mean, that it's, in the it's, chat it's, there, Brenda, so Dave can pick it up. Okay. That's the latest recruit. Yeah, but it was it was it was one of those things that you know you you kicking yourself when you do it yeah. because if I'm on the bandsaw, my clamp rack is right here. You know, I didn't even have to move to pick up a clamp to do it right. So it's a good, there's a good safety lesson in there. Even if you're just hurrying, use the clamps. It, it's right. just so so much safer. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Well, thank you, everyone. Yeah, it's not slowing me down any. So the, the band aid is more to keep things. So I, I can. I, mean, I was on the lathe most of the day today. So there you go. Keep going. Nothing but a scratch, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. All right. It's hard to put Roger. on socks for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, all. Hey. Hey, Roger. All right. I'm turning big ash bowls again. Oh my. Mm -hmm. And I got this one all turned, and the next day, I got a crack. <laughs> right at the piss. What's the best way to patch that? Just glue and sand now, and uh, dust? That looks to be right on the piss. It is. Yeah, it is. What What you could do with that is actually fill that crack with uh, some dust and some um, CA glue and then put a band around the outside and tighten the band up uh, so it actually pulls it together and then you could actually f carry on finishing that off okay. um, In you could finish you could, if it's totally finished you, you it's could not do finished the at all there's nothing on it Okay, so you could actually do um, once you put the the super glue with the dust and the band around to tighten it up to to close that crack. You could finish off the inside, then you could um, finish off the outside yeah. and get get it finished. Okay, hey, Roger. Of am, am super... I, are my eyes deceiving me? But am, am I seeing warpage in your rim there? There is a little bit. Yeah, so I think it's still losing moisture. Yeah, well, instead of using super glue, I would use two part epoxy yeah. and put a drop of black or brown paint in the epoxy after you've mixed it up. Fill the crack with that. If you can get yeah. a band around it, that would work. And yeah, good call, after, Ruby. Good afterwards, call. sand it. So here's the bowl yeah, the it, the center of it. But it cracked also. Mm -hmm. Yep. How thick is how thick is your bottom, Roger? What's that? How how thick is the bottom of the bowl? How thick is it? About a half inch. About a half inch. So yeah. the walls and and all the way through the bowl bottom is about a half inch. Yeah. I can I can show you how I fixed mine. What's the other half? Of the log that I did these from. Nice. Now these didn't crack, but I have <clears throat> this one's got one hole in it where 
got stress relievers already in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the next one has two holes in it. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But they'll just add character. You know, they're pretty. And this one's got one hole in it with a, another little hole here. Mm -hmm. I call those diet soup bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Tough on a vacuum check. <laughs> Roger, Roger, on those on those two ash bowls that are cracked, what I would do is I would I would cut that bowl all the way through, and then put in another a a contrasting wood piece in between, and take it down. Okay, well, this is a good idea. I can I can show something similar, Dane. Yeah, let's let's let me let, let me go to Duxbury here. I I have this trouble yeah. all the time. Put it, yeah, on a band saw, similar to that. Yeah. put it on a bandsaw and set it to the angle of the of the cut. Cut it out. Put a finial in there. Wow. That <laughs> looks pretty. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. yep. That's a great yeah. idea. And you don't have to I'll return anything. Well. Yeah. But wait till it dries. Let yeah. it dry yeah, for yeah, a couple yeah. of months and, and then sand right. the whole outside. You got to have the whole outside finished because... Once you do this, it, the outside's over, and then you could, you could turn the inside. Why can't I make this thing do what I want? Anyway, I like that idea, Jim. That's pretty. I've got a bunch of these. I'm getting pretty good. Yeah, you, yeah you've, showed, you've showed a few of them in the past. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, it covers that crack real well. Yeah. Well, to see, uh, Jim tends to get a lot of wood that is cracked. Yeah. But you got a couple options there, Roger. All right. Like I said, I wanted to use the other half of the log and yeah. Mm -hmm. The first half didn't split, but this one did. Right. right. Hey Roger, right, do you do you, could... have, do you have cats? What's that? By any chance, do you have cats? Cats? No. No. Okay. Well, I was going to say you could you could fill the inside of the bowl with uh, kitty litter, and that'll draw yeah. the rest of the out within within four weeks. Yeah. And here's a big one. The 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 kitty litter will absorb the moisture if you miss well, that. The only difference kitty litter. between these two was. This half set outside in the, and it rained Hi, Rita. a week ago. Right. <laughs> you were noticed. Oh, this, this is a big one. Oh, that's, go ahead. That's pretty. I like I like that idea, Jim. That's pretty. Go I don't know where, where we at? This, this this is a big one. I I got a few of these, uh, but that's a that's a big one that was done. Norwegian, mm -hmm. Norwegian, Norwegian maple and uh, lace, wood. lace wood. But then it looks right. like it's a design. You know, look like you uh, made it that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. Exactly. I, I have done it like Dane said. I've cut the thing right in half and taken taken an inch out or something, put another piece in, like Dane said. But this right. is for for one that's just cracked on the edge. Uh, make sure you got the outside done because when you. Once you set that in there, you can't turn anything on the outside. Mm -hmm. But the inside, you can turn. You you got to get under that hook, right? And and it hurts uh, when you hit that hook. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. And the second you time you hit it, it really hurts. That that's very. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's a great idea, Jim. Great idea. Yeah. My wife wouldn't let me throw it out. That's what really happened. Yeah, I understand <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, let's go to John. You're muted. Yes, John. All right. I think I've got it. Yep, yeah. you're good. I like the uh, candle holders that were shown earlier. And I made a couple the other day, but I got a little bit more primitive with mine than, than what he had. And so here is. Oh, cool. 
I think this is privet. I'm going to get a little pretty. bird and put on the yes. stem out here. That's cool. <laughs> and then I had this other one. Yeah, it looks like a bird perch. Yeah, bird yeah. perch, and and a, you can put a can <laughs> there and do whatever you want to with it. That's cool. Okay, that's it. Very nice. Thank you, John. All right, let's go to Kelly. Hey, Kelly. All right, I got. I turned a little birdhouse. <laughs> Ready. I like that artwork, really do. Yes. It's not showing up good in the light, so I'll I'll share a screen. Have your picture up. Yeah, screen. I saw that on Instagram. That's gorgeous, man. I turned a couple pendants too. Oh yeah. There you go. Nice. Very nice. Uh huh. Uh huh. That like dark wood one is wood. my favorite. That dark wood one is my favorite. Oh, this one's very nice too. How'd you, how'd very you do very the nice. That's sweet. Oh, shut. Nice work. What's the artwork there, Kelly? It's just burned and then milk painted. Oh, okay. Wow. Just a freehand spiral. What's that? Just a freehand spiral. Yeah, no, 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 no. Just it's a burn tip. Did you make the tip, Kelly? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. okay. And that's uh right. ambrosia ambrosia maple burl, and then that that's a a piece of of the the same thing that I cut off the side before I turned it. Mm -hmm. And I made a little uh lantern too. Um there was a let me see here. I'm gonna stop sharing. Let me see. Yeah, I saw your lantern on uh, Facebook. Look good. I like how, uh, I like how down to earth Mike Peace is. Pants or Peace, however you say it. And I also like the fact that he uh, always gives credit to whoever. You know, he doesn't say, I invented this. You know what I mean? He'll say, I saw this in the blah, 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 you know? So let me right. let me see what he said. So he, and he's down to earth too. He doesn't, you know, he's not talking about himself he's just showing you what to do you know teaching you you know what i mean and so i saw in there uh where did you come up with it uh he said that he saw this in uh aaw uh um i think it was john lucas anyway yes yeah that was john lucas was the first place i saw it john lucas yeah so john so and, and the way that he the way that he shows how to do it is is great and he and he and he also he cut he has a second video that kind of gives you a um kind of a rundown on the problems that he had with the first with the first video. So it's it's really neat. You should look it up. It's Mike 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 Peace. It's a, it's real simple to do. It won't take you very long to make one, and they're really freaking cool looking too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a surprise for tonight's demo. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Uh, thanks, Kelly. Is Mike on right. hey, the demo? It's almost, <laughs> it's almost top of the hour. I'm going to stand back to you before we go to our scheduled demonstrator tonight. Okay. Uh, we won't have a safety moment from Sue. Sue's under weather. But um, Sue always offers a little, little tidbit of things to make you think about something. And earlier I said, count the five. Um, and, and that's something we've been promoting here for a long time. This is meeting number 216. Uh, we've been around for over four years. We emphasize working safely, but let's get started safely. And when I say count to five, um, especially for novice turners or turners that are a little antsy about what's going to happen, um, think it through. Count to five is just the thing of saying, all right, before I press that green button and make this thing spin at 3,000 RPMs and a chunk of wood start dancing around and I'll walk across the room or whatever, 
let me think about what's going to happen. What's going to spin? What's going to catch? What's going to go? What's going to protect my face and my lungs? Uh, what could catch? You know, long sleeve on the shirt's going to catch onto the tool rest or the bar or whatever. Is my tail stock locked down? Um, is my, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's what the counting five thing is. Take just one minute and run through those steps. And that's before you press that go button. Because once you press that go button, the next button comes up and says, oh, damn. You don't want to press that oh, damn button. That's the one that you don't need. So walk through it. As Sue would say, start safely and safely. All righty. Who we have up for our gallery for our demonstration tonight at seven o'clock central time. Um, and you're tuned to Worldwide Wood Turners, and we have the world's greatest war website for wood turning. And if you miss any of these demonstrations, they're on our website. It's like some gentleman said about ha having a device that you could mount on your leg to see um what do you call it? A linear motor device um to right. to, to do cutting grind. There's there's dozens of vari variations of that that are out there, and people make them every single day. We showed one or two last week, and that information for you is on our website. And if you need help finding those things, you can also you can query us on our website, ask on the contact, say, do you know if we have such and such such such, and one of our members will look it up for you and get back to you. And remember. Every single motion, every single move is made by this club are made by volunteers. There's no money changing hands here. Not a single nickel is changing hands. And that's because we are out to share information. We started this thing on, a, on a, the basis of sharing what we do with who we are amongst ourselves. There's no click. There's no, no, no organization. You, we never did teach the secret handshake. That's a shame. But um, but if you need something, we're turning, it's going to be right here. And if you need our help, it's right here. If you need to ask us something, you can ask us in the chat, and we can come back to you. So suppose you're, you're, you're slightly embarrassed, and you don't want to ask a question. Put it right there. Put it in the chat. Say, I need to know more about such and such. And we can get somebody to help you. That's what all these people are sitting around doing. They're out to help you and sharing your information. So tonight, this evening, tomorrow, whatever, if Worldwide Wood Turners can help you, that's what we're here for to do. All right. It's time to go. Um, time to go to our demonstration. Who's going who is on the hot seat? Well, we got Mr. Grinstead that's going to be on the hot seat. I, I just want to club I, just, I briefed. I just briefly wanted to mention about the secret handshake uh, that you mentioned. Um, it, it involves five fingers now, okay? <laughs> but in case, you know, folks didn't know it, um, those that watch Star Trek and Mr. Spock, he was a pen turner, and he used CA for his uh, super glue finish on his uh, <laughs> pens. That's why he didn't like it. <laughs> Y'all didn't know. That, that's a good one, yeah. <laughs> All right, there's my you humor. Using CA to put something together, nothing hits the floor. <laughs> That's my humor for this half of the show. So without further ado, let's go to Mr. Grenstad. Uh, he's going to put on an, a fabulous demonstration for us tonight. Uh, it will be a recorded video. And all questions and comments, please keep them in, the, in your hip pocket. And we will discuss them at the conclusion of the video. I am going to mute everybody. Um, once I mute everybody, Bob, you will need to unmute yourself. So I am muting everybody now. Go ahead, Bob. All right. Uh, I, I, uh, I will just show you how I uh, turn these. Uh, that's what my video is about tonight. But yeah, this is a, a John Lucas idea. That's uh, that's where I saw these. But uh, they are little cute little gifts. I mean, you could make several and hang on a tree. You could just, you know, give them out as individual gifts, and that's what I'm going to do. But uh, there's various in lights. You know, one guy on here was talking about the lights being uh, where you could turn them, you could buy them where they stay on for six hours and turn off for eight. So if you wanted to uh, put them on a tree or 
someplace, then it would turn itself off. So that was a good idea. But, uh, but anyway, let me start my video, see if I can't uh, do a screen share here and uh, go to the video. And let's see what, uh, see what, how I did it. All right, I, uh, I start off by figuring out what size block I need. This little uh, candle that I have is an inch and a half in diameter. So I know I'm going to drill an inch and a half hole for this. And I know that I need uh, some meat around the side of this to be able to turn it. So it needs to be about two inches. Uh, my blocks are not two inches. They're uh, they're actually a little less than an inch and seven eighths, and and they work out fine. It'll be fine. It's just uh, I know I'm going to cut that inch and a half hole in here, but I don't have a lot of room here to play with. Uh, if it's a two true two inch square block, then you would have more meat around it. But, uh, to be able to turn away a little safer. So anyway, I do mark the centers. I use this little tool to uh, mark the center with, and I just go around it four times, and you can see where the center is. You can see that uh, I'm going to have to come in. Something here. I'm going to have to go into this to find the center of this one, but the center this way, both the lines lined up. So that is my center. And I can do the same thing over here. Here's my center this direction. And here's the center the other way. And I just find the center between those two lines here. And mark the centers. So I mark the centers. And uh, come back and actually uh, put a little hole in it. My drill go in the right spot. Because what I want to do is to uh, kind of drill these out a little bit. Let me drill those. And the bit I'm using, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's really uh, find a little lighter piece here to put behind it, maybe. But it's uh, for drilling the uh, starter at the uh, starter drill bit, I think is what you call it, uh, because it is big until you get to the tip here, and then these are smaller, uh, so you can drill smaller holders. But the, but the uh, drill bit doesn't bend on you. And all I want to do here is get a little bit just enough to get that step drive to uh, catch and then also to have my uh, slide kill stop to catch it. Okay. So now let me go uh, start turning these. I know I'm going to need to, to square up the end. I know I'm going to have to come in at least this far, drill in at least this far with an inch and a half drill bit. And so I can start my window here that I want to show go past that. So let me go we'll get that set up and I'll show you that. Let me put the center in. Uh, I keep saying the uh, step center, but I'm not really sure what that's called. But anyway, you uh, you can see it, and uh, you'll know what it is. But uh, to keep from having to change my chuck every time, I'm just going to use this center. I believe it'll hold it without a problem.
I think you're muted. I'm sorry. Bob, are you doing any talking? Because I'm being muted, Dan. Bob's muted too. Not just his video, but he is. Okay, now, how about now? Got you now. Okay. And all I want to do now is to uh, round it off. Let me let me back up just a little bit here where you can see it. Probably backed up too far. No, that's fine. I believe that's enough to uh well, I'm like Chuck to get it. Uh, it is flat on the side, but as long as it can grip it, that's all I'm worried about. But it's, it's a real soft wood, so it'll be fine. All right, so I have it in the chuck, and all I want to do now is to uh, round it off. All right, so now I have uh, it fairly squared up on the end. I've got it almost round, and I really don't care because I'm going to keep it around with it anyway. Right now, all I want to do is to uh, mark off my segments here. I know that I want uh, this to fit in at least to here. So that's what I'm going to drill to. And then I want a little lip here before I start my window. And then I want this window to be about an inch and a half. I, I don't like a real tall window. The, uh, the one I show here that I made with earlier was uh, was a, a taller. This one here is just going to be an inch and a half window. And then I want another little edge before I start my uh, lid. So let me uh, move in. Well, I can see the mark. I don't know if you can or not, but I can see those marks. And here, I just want to take it down a little bit because I don't have a lot of room to play with it. And then I want to take it down a little further. Because I think it looks better if... Uh, if there's more to find. Yes. 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 Yes.
this has been needed. And so far, we haven't heard anything substantial that's coming from the city. And the American people are hungry for something substantial to come out of the meeting between the president and China. There's a lot of All right, so this is the window that's going to show. Uh, I can either drill this on four sides, like you do on normal uh, ice drill or whatever they call it. You drill it four times to make a little ornament. But you drill those windows in here. But uh, at this point, I'm going to wrap these windows out uh, because I want uh, little slots in here. So uh, this is probably smooth enough for right now. I can redefine this later, but you don't want to have to cut most of this away after you get the slots cut. So you want to do this first. You can know the uh, diameter of this, and you can do them with calipers and all that, but this is, this to me, is an easier way. Uh, you just wrap a piece of tape around it and, uh, and then mark it. So that I know Right there is the diameter around this thing. So I know it's that long, that far around there. Okay, from the tape, we know that uh, the distance around this, the uh, circumference, is 124 millimeters. Now, I use millimeters because it's a whole lot easier to divide than uh, or multiply than fractions. So I've got 124 millimeters. My drill bit or my router bit is a quarter inch router bit. It's a uh, quarter inch spiral uh, bit. And a quarter inch is approximately uh, six millimeters. So let's say that I want to uh, go 12 times around this thing. So I take uh, 12 windows in here. You could have 11, you could have 10, you could have whatever you want. If you have 12 windows, so you take 12 and divide that into 124, the length of the uh, circumference, and you end up with 10.33 millimeters for each one of these little windows in here, from here to here. Okay, if I take out my router bit, which is six millimeters, and I have uh, the actual portion of wood that's going to be left is 4.33 millimeters wide. So as you can see up here in my example, this is the part I'm going to route out, the six millimeters. I'm going to have a little wood piece inside this that's going to show as four millimeters. So every every uh, ten point three millimeters, I'm going to have another window. So I need to create an index wheel that has twelve indexes around it. If I decided I wanted this to be wider. Let's say that it's, uh, I don't know, whatever it be. Let's say that I do want this wider. Instead of dividing it by 12 and getting 12 windows around it, I do 11 windows around it, or I do 10 windows around it. But it's the same example. So let me show you the index. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, mathpolate.com, math. P O L A T E dot com. And it's a graph paper. Uh, I have gone to uh, the actual polar graph and I can tell it the thickness of the line. You can tell it how many circles are in here. You can tell it how many spokes and these individual spokes. 
in my scenario, I wanted 12. If you wanted it, uh, let's say you wanted it nine spokes, and you do a nine spokes, I still have my two circles here, and I can regenerate it, and it'll put out nine spokes around here and still have two circles. So let's go back to my 12 and regenerate. So now I've got 12 spokes around this circle. If I want to print this, I can download it. Okay. And then I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have a little print deal over here. I can hit print and then come in and print down at the bottom. And then it'll print that for me. And once I get it printed, my printer is not printing ink on this side. But once I get it printed, I can take that and uh, put this, paste this on a piece of anything. Uh, uh, just paneling. It's a lightweight or heavyweight, whatever you want. And then you come back wherever this intersection is out here and you drill holes. So you're going to drill holes all the way around each one of these 12 little spots. And then that becomes your index. Well, now you have an index, a circle indexed by 12 slots. And I can use this to drill a hole like on a, a normal uh, a normal lathe. I mean, you have, what, an inch in, uh, an inch diameter hole that would go around your chuck or go around your, uh, your, uh, you know, on your headstock. In my scenario, I'm going to drill a 5 8 inch hole because that's what I'm using as a 5 8 inch shaft out of my uh, headstock. Okay, I have my index wheel created. It's out of just a piece of paneling. It doesn't have to be very thick, and the thinner it is, probably the uh, the better it is because you can move it around your uh, point that you're going to hold this with. I have a, a five eighths inch hole in mind for my five eighths inch spindle. If you were going to do this, you might probably are going to want a one inch hole or an inch and a quarter hole, whatever will fit your headstock, because your chuck is going to go on the top of this and hold it. So you screw it on here and screw it tight where this doesn't move in relationship to your chuck. And I have uh, the holes drilled at each one of these uh, spokes. I've got 12 spokes because I'm going to divide that distance around that uh, circumference into 12. All right, so I have my uh, index wheel on here. Uh, it is behind the chuck, and it's uh, fixed where it's uh, kind of stationary, so it doesn't move in relationship to the router bit. Uh, you can put sandpaper, you can put, uh, you could glue it if you want to, but I wouldn't suggest that. Just put a piece of sandpaper back in it, and it should hold it where it uh, does not uh, turn when the chuck turns. And then I have a, another banjo on here. Uh, this banjo I have made for uh, different things, but it basically it holds a platform for me. So uh, let me show you the platform. Uh, here's my platform. It's nothing but a piece of three quarter inch uh, stock. Uh, it has a spacer in here that I've created to get it whatever tool I'm going to put on here at the right height so it can be centered with. Uh, with the lathe. And then I have a just a sacrificial platform on top of it. Uh, but this platform is going to actually hold my router. My router is going to sit up here and slide back and forth in here in a carriage. Let me show you my carriage.
Yeah, I did have to put some uh, sandpaper. I just tore off a piece of sandpaper and put it through here and then put pressure up against my uh, tailstock and tighten down the chuck so it will not move. So now it is uh, stationary with the, with the headstock. My index wheel stationary with the headstock. This is my little router, router platform. Uh, it's nothing but uh, a straight edge on this side so I can run it up against this edge. And I can push it through here and then I can slide this back and forth like a carriage. I have stops on each end so I can only go so far. I have this set up to where it is straight up and down with my waves too. So uh, I know that uh, it is a route. It's going to go in and go straight across back and forth again. The router itself. The router itself is a Harbor Freight router. Uh, it's just on a little platform here held in with uh, the bolt that normally fits into this router, into this little plastic thing. I do have a slot in it so it won't twist and turn, uh, but it fits this router. This router came from Harbor Freight. It was like a $29 router, so it's cheap and it's lightweight, and it serves my purpose. So I need to set this up. And it slides back and forth. I, this one, the bottom deal slides back and forth this way. The router slides in and out of that platform. If you can see it or not, but it slides in and out on the platform itself. So, uh, so that's my setup. I just need to uh, figure out uh, how far I want to set these blocks. So this one here is almost to the edge. I'm going to back it up a little bit. The stuff on my index wheel, I've made out just of a piece of wire, a piece of uh, rod here, one eighth inch rod, uh, and I can pull it over, move it, and push it back in a hole, and then the the spindle will not move. It's just a spindle lock to, in, to lock it at the Oil of index marks that I have. All right, I got my router set up to where it'll only go back and forth a certain distance on this table. And when I push it in, I've got some marks down here on the bottom here so I know how far I'm going in. I don't have to go in very far. I just have to go in, you know, I'm going to have this inch and a half hole on this side. The next hole I could go in here might be an inch and a quarter. So I just have to go in to where I meet that half an inch and a quarter hole or go past it. So it'll be a nice clean cut when I drill that hole through. So let me turn this on and start it. All right, so I have cut my first one in here, my first slot, and now I'm going to cut the next 12. I've gone deep enough, I believe, where I can hit my inch and a quarter uh, drill bit when I go through here. And I might come back and uh, make it a little deeper just to ensure that it will hit it. I have all the windows cut, so uh, the next step is to drill it out. You can see all the little windows I've got in here. And then uh, we're going to drill it out. First, we're going to drill an inch and a half. All right, before I drill it, I drill out the center. Let me, uh, let's talk about different windows here. Uh, the one I just did was I uh, routed out the windows. So left a little bit coming up. Uh, if you don't want it to look like that, like little windows, if you don't want it to look like that, you can drill it. 
Uh, I have a, a drilling platform. I'm using the same base that I had before. And this one here is just a base that I had uh, made for a different uh, application, still a Malay. But then I also made this little carriage thing that fits in it. It uh, fits around my drill. Uh, this is an adjustment on the back here. So that if I'm not quite level, I can adjust this, you know, up or down or wherever I want it. And it uh, slides back and forth on the, the carriage that's below. So to drill these, I would uh, clamp this down and then just push these in, you know, drill it and push it in. And uh, you can figure out the distance that you want. Uh, by putting that tape on there again. So let me show you, let me go do that. I put a tape around here. I mark it so I have that diameter. All right, so here's the diameter that I had around the piece that I have right now. And it's 140 millimeters. If I take the 140, let's say I want to drill those four holes around. If I take the 140, and divide it by four for my four holes, then I end up with 35 millimeters for a distance, a total distance between this area. If I take a, an inch and a quarter bit, which is about one, uh, 31.75 millimeters, find a different pointer here, and uh, subtract that from 35, that only leaves me about 3.25 millimeters of wood between each hole. So I don't think that's enough. So if I take it down to uh, an inch and an eight, that's 28.57 millimeters. And if I subtract that from 35, then I get 6.43 millimeters between the holes as a rib between the holes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill this at one at an inch and an eighth and have 6.34 millimeters between each hole. And if I think that's too big, I can always turn it down and make and make this distance less, which would make this less if I want to do that. But I think this is going to be about right. So that's what I would drill the four holes around it with this one. So let me go uh, go play with that a minute. So with an eight uh, inch and an eight bit in here, I have to decide where I want this platform to sit. And I think it's just gonna be about right here. I, I know that I want my window to start right here at the edge of this, uh, this and come up here somewhere. But I'm not gonna mark this in yet until I get the holes drilled. I could center the hole further up and have more distance at the bottom, but I don't think I need that. I don't think uh, I don't think that's gonna help me in the appearance of it. So I'm gonna clamp this down right about here and drill four holes. I'm also gonna use the same index wheel I had before. Remember my little index wheel that I had made? Well, it's divided by 12. So that's easily, uh, you know, that's set, it's got 12 spokes going around it. So I can easily do this into fours and drill four holes. Another option here, instead of drilling four holes, you could divide this by six. So every other hole, and you would have six, drill bits going around it, six holes going around. And if you use the, so it would be like using this one and this one. If I change that and I wanted to go in a second row of holes, I could go in between there and do the next two. So it would alternate holes going across there. And I could have like three hole, three, three uh, rings of holes six holes, six holes, and six holes, but they wouldn't be all lined up. You would have a hole here, a hole here, and a hole there going around it. So I don't know if that 
helped any or not, but uh, but you could use the same index wheel to do that. So drill these four holes first. And again, you don't have to drill all the way through. All you've got to do is to drill down to where your uh, inch and a half bit is going to drill, inch and a quarter, that's going to drill all the way through the center up here. You just have to drill to that point. So I'm going to drill four holes, not quite, maybe to nearly halfway through this thing. But I don't have to go to the halfway mark if I don't have to, if I don't want to. And I can also tell on this, I should have a, I should have a smaller bit because this inch and an eighth is not going to be small enough either. You can see that the little pieces here are already awful small, and uh, and you don't want that. So I would go to a, probably an inch bit for this size and drill it. So Bob, Bob where, where did your yeah. calculation go wrong? But you, uh, I wasn't well. the The main thing is the angle. You know, you see how the the curvature of this when you cut it, and it's uh, you know, even though I've got the circumference right, I wasn't planning on the uh, the angle going around the side of that cylinder. Oh, okay. You know, All if right. it was flat, you'd have more room across here. But it's not flat. You're actually drilling at an angle toward the other hole. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So it really ends up smaller. Thank you. Elongation. Elongation. Yeah. Right. There you go. But it. Uh, but yeah, a smaller bit works better here. Get the idea anyway.
Well, it's not too bad right there. Uh, it's a little bit off, but uh, let me uh, sand a little more. I think it'll take care of it. All right, I'm ready to uh, drill. So let me drill this thing out. Uh, first, I have to drill an inch and a half hole at this, uh, this little candle. And I only want it to go deep enough to where this thing will fit flush in there. So I can drill it, turn it around, and check it and uh, see if it's in here far enough. Let me try that. Turn the lathe down a little It's not quite deep enough, so I need to go a little further. Okay, so now it's deep enough to sit in there flush. So now I just need to uh, drill out that inch and a half hole, uh, inch and a quarter hole for the center. It was an inch and a half for the for the uh, light, and the center is an inch and a quarter. You don't need to measure it because you can see it. You can see this thing drill all the way through here. I am going to use some air just so it kind of clears it out. So when you first go in, you want to kind of go slow so it hits that center or finds the center. Too much pressure on your dinner. Oh. After looking at this again, I don't necessarily think it was pressing too hard. I think what it was, I went too far in with the router bit. So I I ate away everything. There wasn't anything holding the uh, the the, uh, the ribs. They were just sitting there. And uh, when it was bringing cut through the uh, cutting cutting down through this, it looks like something probably hung and just twisted it, got stuck in the rib and just twisted it right off because they definitely twisted it. Anyway, I don't know, but uh, have to try something else. Okay, I want to make uh, bale trees, a uh, little hanger so you can hang them up. Uh, so uh, this time I'm using a one inch dowel and I just wrapped it around it, making the legs straight. And I know that I want to turn uh, turn the uh, thing back in. I just don't know how long of a, how long I want this piece right here. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and turn it. Bend it and cut this one on. Bend it in. Cut 
And then use this to straighten it up, form it. I've got it in here. And even this direction, you know, I need to uh, kind of make sure they are in line with each other. Maybe something like that. And let's see what that looks like. So I drilled this hole in these, and I can put it together just like that. You squeeze it a little bit, and uh, there's a uh, there's a little bale. That one's crooked. Uh, maybe if I finally get it bent over a little bit and straighten it up. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. He's still a little crooked here. But it just takes uh, working with it till you get it uh, how you want it to look. Uh, I don't think that looks too bad. It could set down over the top of it like that. So that's it. You uh, That one there was a one-inch dowel. You could do it with a three-quarter inch dowel and uh, just barely you know, go around the sides of this, make a smaller one. Or it could be a round loop. You don't have to uh, have it like this. It could be a round ring up here. But this is uh, just number 12 gauge uh, copper wire. Uh, it's just like a, you know, electrical wiring. You can buy uh, by the foot at Home Depot. Uh, it's awful cheap. And uh, if you want it a little brighter, you can sit here with sandpaper and brighten it up uh, before, you, before you do that. And... Uh, it does, it does make it a little brighter and coppery looking, uh, but that's it. Pretty easy to do. All right. Uh, let's see up back here. All right. So, uh, so they were easy to do, but yeah, that's, uh, that's why that one broke. I did go back and uh, make two more. And as long as you don't, when this router bit, when it goes through here, they're they're so close together, and it's at an angle coming in. You if you go too deep, you take all the uh, all the meat around uh, in here all the way to that center away. So then there's nothing there to support it. This thing would still twist as soon as it any little thing comes in. Uh, the the shavings off of the when they're drilling out the center, if it catches in here, then it will catch it and pop it and you don't break it but uh, but otherwise they turned out pretty good that's yeah, it good. beautiful job bob all right thank, job, thanks for thank watching you. very nice nice, nice job. job great ideas for sure great ideas anybody yeah. have any questions uh for bob on any of his processes his indexing rig or um anything now's your chance to yeah. ask him yeah, can I say say one more word about that index? You know, if you buy the index wheels, and you know, I've got two of those too. But if you if you want, those are all divisible, divisible by uh, I mean by even numbers. You know, if I had twelve going around this, if I wanted eleven going around it, I can't do it with a store bottle. Most of those are all divided by even numbers. The uh, but if you make your own, you can make it whatever you want. You can make it eleven, nine, three, uh, and and make your own index with them. And they're easy to do. They're cheap. You throw it away if you don't want to keep it. But uh, uh, anyway, the idea is to be able to do it yourself without buying anything. Very good, Bob. Good tip, sir. Do you, Bob, do you think? Do you think Go it ahead, would be Dad. easier to? Um, drill that big center hole if you did it first before you cut your uh, windows? Uh, it would probably be easier to drill it. But I but then I was worried about it breaking through. You know, you've got the router bit going through there, nothing to support the other side of it, and you're going to just bust it out on the inside. Oh, what? You know, and I, you know, I didn't want to do that. That's the reason I drilled it first. 
Right. I, I'm just thinking you have you don't have anything supporting those little spindles when you're drilling that center out. Um, I don't well, know. Will, I don't know. You will you will have if you don't go all the way. If you don't go as deep, I went too deep. If I went, too I got you. Or to the center. Okay, I got you. Yeah. If you yeah. if you don't if you just if you just go to where that quarter that inch and a quarter bit would you know, would pass the edge of the inch and a quarter bit, then it's still right. the rings are still attached to that centerpiece all the way down every bit of the drilling it would still be attached to the pit center. Sure. Sure. Hmm. Uh, what keeps the candle in place? Is that a friction fit? Yeah, it's just a friction fit. I've got uh, a little piece of sandpaper in here just to hold it. You know, I just doubled it up and stuck it in there. But, you know, you could glue them in because the battery deal is right here. I mean, you could, you don't have to have them back out again. John John Lucas on his, on his write up in the AAW magazine was hot gluing. He put a little piece of hot glue in there in the bottom after he put mm -hmm. that tea light in. Sure, you so, yep. hot glue on the sides, you know, just two two little dots and hold it in here. Uh, thanks. You, you know, on some of that stuff, uh, like Stuart Mortimer did those hollow forms with the binds up the side. If you turn the inside by hand, you can actually see the depth you're turning and work your way out to the thickness of the spindle you want. Sure, if you, yeah, if you wanted to turn it by hand. Yeah. Know. But to me, it was easier to drill. I'd I'd rather drill it than to uh, have to get a tool down in here. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> all of it, here, chicken. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Bob. <laughs> no, it's not that hard because you can actually see what you're doing, and the chips come out. It's not like turning a hollow form. No, no, you're right. You can see it. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Much appreciated for the demo, as always. Okay, good. All right, so yeah. almost top of the hour. Let's span back to Eddie. Like Bob alluded to, if you got a gallery item, throw it in the chat, and I will take you down, and we'll get to your piece. If I missed you at the beginning of the program, because the, I couldn't keep up with the chat messages here on my phone, then put your name in the chat, and I will get, get back to you as well. Yeah, we didn't skip you. We just might have missed you. But, uh, and put it in there. We're looking for you. That idea on the index wheel is really nice. It's easy to lay out. You've seen it now. The program is on our website. Where else can you go for it? All right. So you go to the website and you can program that out. Um, working with the index wheel is a solution to a lot of problems. And we saw earlier today, uh, we got some little pendants that were spun and uh, Shaw did those for us, Kelly Shaw. And those are indexed out and you can be using the Duxbury jig to do that and setting it, but you can adjust the Duxbury jig using an index wheel, make your own index wheel. Um, I love it when I had my, and I kept varying what I could do with them and how to work with them made up all kinds of simple attachments for the lathe to pin them and, and hold them. It gives a lot of variety to the work you're doing, especially if you're doing something with after or linear motors outside of the lathe, uh, like the drill or the Dremel or, 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 or um, and those things. When you're moving those tools, gives you that uh, versatility of offsetting. Last week we saw... The, uh, the slots done with the, the Dremel tool. And that was just a little indexed out, worked out. Perfect program. And you get all those details right here on worldwidewoodturners.org. If you've got something like that you'd like to share, we have the website to share it on. That's right. If you've got an idea or brain cramp or whatever and you want to share with us, um, we'd like to get together with, oh, wait, wait, wait. Like to get together. Yeah. It's next week. Next week, like to get together nothing. Next week, October the 22nd, uh, November the 22nd. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. Uh, we're going to have a tips and tricks day. That's right. This is when we go in your shop inside your head. It's a dangerous place sometimes. But we go in there and want to see what you've come up with. 
we just saw Bob had a slide, a drill, and all that. And we've other, we've seen other things. Uh, we wanted to call it the Duxbury Hour, but we were told we can't do that. No. But <laughs> this is when we, you know, we we go in your shop and see what you came up with. You go in your shop and see what you made. That you go, doesn't everybody do this? You know, that's the thing. Doesn't everybody do it? Uh, no. And we have a lot of turners that are just thinking, well, I, I take the long way about it. Undo it because it's too hard. I got a hard time laying it out. I got to get it, you know, no crybabies. We got a solution for you. Hey, if we don't have a solution, throw us the problem. Can that work out? Yeah. Sounds like I'm selling used cars. If we don't have a solution, it's because we don't know the question. That's right. It's like I'm selling used cars here. Um, yeah. If you if you've got something, you want to know something, you got a problem with something, talk to us about it. That's it. Yes. Bring it to, it's next week. We're gonna do a whole program, the whole two and a half or three and a half hours of it. This is number two sixteen. That'll be number two seventeen. Tips and tricks from you, the wood turner. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't pay demonstrators to come in here. We ask the best in the world to demonstrate for us. Right there. The best in the entire world. And we want to see what you came up with. Uh, a little personal note here. Has anybody heard about Mark Soleil? Anybody updates on Mark? He's anybody online. Here, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything. Okay. Mark Mark had gone under the weather again and was having some problems. And He's online with us. He is. Yeah. Mark Soleil's iPhone 13. Okay, good, good. All right. Well, he's grumpy. He'll jump in. Um, just wanted to see how he's making out. We keep track of family. It's like family. Folks, that's what we are. We're just all sitting on a tailgate talking about wood turning. One of our friends goes under the weather a little bit. We all care. We all pray. We all want to see get it a little, a little bit better. So if you got something coming up, um, I like what we did tonight for Christmas ornaments. We've seen a couple of different ideas on Christmas ornaments and ideas, the pendants and things like that. These are little gifts. I bring this up every week when we talk. It's holiday season. Next week, you're going to go mooch. I mean, uh, <clears throat> you're going to go get a turkey dinner with some family or friends or whatever, or they're going to come over to your house. In the time you went to the shop, turned a little something for them, if not for the, for the adults, turn something for the kiddies, the kids, the grandchildren, the nieces and nephews, all those folks. Turn a little something, turn a little medallion, turn a little whistle or whatever. I mean, I, I have a ball, go out in the shop and generate something for them, put it on a kitchen table at a dining room table, bring a bottle stopper, put it in the top of a bottle. Um, in Louisiana, bottle stoppers are rare, are rarely used. We usually drink the bottle to the end of the bottle and throw it away. But, you know, bring a bottle stopper or, or something. Give them a gift that comes from you, your heart, your shop. Remember, there's not another one like it in the entire world. That's a fact. You made it. It came from your heart. It's above all else. And if you got something to show to us, we do have what we always call the no but guarantee. Right here at Worldwide Wood Turners, we look at your gallery, Adam. There's a no but. I will not, nobody else in this meeting will ever say, I like that but. That but is not permitted. We are not qualified to critique your work. I'm not qualified to critique any work. Neither is, I don't believe, anybody else. There's nobody sitting on the hierarchy that says, I can cook. No. We want to see your art. We want to see what comes out of your hands. We want to see what you dream up, what you've created which have came through. Oh, I'm trying this. No, you're achieving that. We want to see what you come up with. As simple as you may think it is, or as uh, whatever, it is your work. You accomplished it. You did it. You went out and you made it. I want to see what you did. So put online, say, I want to see something, right? I want to show you something. Put it in the chat. We'll call on you. We introduce you and boom. There you go. We'll be looking at your work. No but guarantee. Now, if you have got a, a lathe, a nice new lathe, and you're getting occasional catches, 
or you're having a problem with overloads or the sanding just isn't going really good, you need to have one more add item to add it to your lathe. And that would be a worldwide wood turner sticker. If you don't have one of these, your lathe just isn't running right. That's it. Bottom line. Now, if you can add one to your grinder, uh, Brenda's got one on her recliner. Um, I've seen them on bandsaws. Um, these, these work. They really do work. We can get you 10 of these stickers, 10 of them, uh, mailed to you for $5 if you live in the continental U.S. Um, it's a dollar more if you live outside of that area. But you get all, you get 10 of them, put them in the mail to you. You can order them through our website. Yeah, on the front page of our website, the, the one that's the world's greatest in the entire world. Um, you go there and you find out where you can do it. You pay by PayPal. It comes to me. That's what Todd Williams did. Um, yeah, Todd, Todd Williams. He ordered his today. And finally, uh, Doug Rowe ordered some today. Yeah, Doug Rowe, member number one. Finally get around to it. Uh, but if you want a sticker like that, we have it. We also have a way for you to have uh, a clothing you own screen printed. The details are on our website. We also have the the, lay, the, the um, patterns for you to have embroidery work done. You can have it done on a residential embroidery machine. It uses one of these three patterns, which Bob Grinstead graciously donated to us. Or you go to a, a, a embroidery store and they'll use a pattern to do it on something you own. But we're giving you a couple options to wave our colors. We always have to wave our colors because we are a growing wood turning club and we're your club. And it's all up to you. And we say that because there's no magazine. No membership, no dues, nothing else. It's just you and me and a whole bunch of other people sitting on the tailgate talking wood turning, lying about it and everything else. That's why we're here. Who's up for demo to, uh, gallery tonight, folks? I got to see what you did. I really do. You got some stuff. What's up there? Well, God, you know, this guy named Terry, he's got something. He's in trouble. He's normally yeah, trouble. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Harry, you got? Oh, I don't have a whole lot. I've been real busy with a big story, but anyway, I've been pretty busy. But I've been playing with the finials. I haven't made the ornaments yet, but I've been playing with some ribbon finials and uh, different arrangements and trying to get them different sizes and going. And I wanted one thing to show you, if you see this one here and this one here these are twofers when i made the one finial i unscrewed the piece out of the other one after i cut it and i made it set on the bottom if you can see where it sets down there on the bottom of this finial so i get two spirals out of each turning it yeah, was pretty yeah. good it was just playing with it but this is the the first ones I made and showed last week were a couple of on uh, some walnut uh, spears, but uh, somebody last week I think it might have been Brenda showed one with a piece in the middle, and I've been playing with that. I don't like this one. I'm probably going to change it. It doesn't have much Dave character. George. But Dave George. But now <laughs> I got it. Huh? Dave George so, did. Who was it? Oh, okay. Dave I remember George. seeing it, but I didn't remember who did it. But anyway, I was just playing with them. Now, next week, if I get some time, I'll make some ornaments to hang them on. Joaquin did a demonstration on making some ornaments of a different style. So I'll steal his ideas for next week, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But as always, yeah. that's why we got the club, so we can steal each other's ideas. Right. That's right. And Terry, it. Terry, it's not stealing, it's flattery. That's right. <laughs> I, can, but, I can't uh, tell you how, how ecstatic I am that y'all have taken that spiral finial and run with it like so far and so hard. It's just great to see. <laughs> well, right. Keith's floating so around the room. I appreciate everybody that shows, and I always come away on every Thursday morning with something new to try and gives me something to do. And, and on one mother note, has anybody heard anything from Martin? Yes, I can you hear me? Hey, Mark. Yeah. We got you. 
Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I've had a total of four stroke incidents so far, mm. and uh, I'm uh, I'm back to turning a little bit, and I can walk without a cane and without a walker now. Excellent. And, uh, Great. I'm uh, doing pretty good, and uh, I, I hope everybody uh, knows that uh, our good buddy Frank Bowers passed away, and uh, his uh, funeral was uh, this on Veterans Day, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a very good ceremony. Um, Katie Navarro came over and helped me finish his urn. She got a threading lesson and uh, had a beautiful ceremony. And Frank, I believe, has uh, taught more people than anybody else I have ever known in wood turning. Uh, but he was, uh, he had a heart attack and he spent nine weeks in the uh, intensive care and his body just gave out. Very sad. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Great man. But I'm going to be okay. Uh, anybody Good. that wants any type of wood, I'm liquidating all three of my warehouses. And I can ship it out of bull blanks, billets, just about any kind of wood you want. I can, I, I can send out either UPS or uh, postal. Um, you know, priority boxes. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to come by, uh, guys have been coming by, bringing their trucks and trailers, and we're selling wood cheap by the truck and trailer load. Oh, my goodness. I wish I was closer. Mm -hmm, me too. Me too. <laughs> me too. Man, well, you guys are all closer. Thank, thanks, Mark. Right. You're doing better. He's back up on his feet, which means ass kicking ain't too far away. Watch out. Right. Man. That's right. And uh, I'll listen, guys. I'll come back when I get a little bit more deafness in my hands and I'll do you some demos. All right. That's good deal. Put them in a book. Put it in a book. We don't let them get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got you down now, bud. Okay. Thank you, Mark. It's great. It's Thanks, great. Thank you very you, much Mark. for asking. It's really All nice right. to see you, Mark. I'm very sorry. Wow, to pick you've, up a tool you've got to follow a follow up to you, gentlemen. I what? Sorry, go. Go ahead, Terry. Oh, uh, I was just telling Mark that I very seldom pick up one of my tools when I don't think of what Mark preached on how to use it, and I, I really, really, I do a lot of slicing, and I get more and more all the time mm -hmm. good for yep. you but the only bad thing about it is, is i'm afraid of screws <laughs> right. yeah, and i'm still distributing all the other stuff that i do the parfix and all the different uh you know pepper mill parts and things like that uh, i'm just getting rid of it all okay good to know thanks mark all right yeah good i always see you. Demo tonight, Bob. All right, yeah. let's go to uh, Al. You need to start your video. Hey, we got you now. Got me. How's everyone doing? We had it, Al. That's good. <clears throat> Talk about all these finials um, on Doug's uh, Doug's. Video yesterday, I I chatted in his chat, and just like what Terry said, yes, you could get two out of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this uh, is uh, I I I cut this out of that, and um, yes, you could get two out of one. I mean, it's Absolutely. something to think about, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, Let's see. There's a. <clears throat> the yeah, I've been saving. I've been saving my innards, Albert, looking for an opportunity. So I'm going to be doing some of that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just 
I, I instead of uh, filing when I saw you do it in the demo, I just didn't want the, all the the dust where I was at at the time. I didn't feel like hearing, you know, hearing, you know, the, my, my dust collector and stuff. So I just, you know, played around and I said, well, look at that. You know? uh, yeah, it's now, useful. Getting back to Jim Duxbury, <laughs> um, you, you still, you, you have me nuts with spheres um, all, all all summer. Like, you know, the, the thing with the bowl with all the, the spheres and spin and stuff. I'm, I'm still nuts with it. So I, I, I turned... I turned an offset sphere. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, made a little chalice of it. Then while I was at, well, why not, you know, put a captured ring on it. <laughs> That's cool. Playing around. Very abstract. Now, um, getting to Wayne last week uh, with Paul Pree, I a buddy of mine gave me a, a it was a, maybe an inch and three quarter inch piece of cherry. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, what do you want to do? I do whatever you want. So here, this is my pull Ooh. free. Uh, a pull free. Uh, I, no, I, I, I made a lid uh, according to Wayne last, last, uh, but I'm not ready. Uh, I'm going to get the uh, uh, chameleon colors and uh it, uh, was the incandescent paints and stuff. Uh, so I didn't want to really show the lyric so yet, but this is uh, my potpourri <laughs> uh, bowl. And I, I, I kind of like the way I got it all flared out. Yes, that makes oh, yeah. sense. It looks good. I like the, the looks of it. Now, it now Jim, uh, you, you uh, for about five seconds, you talked about, now here's uh a napkin holder with toothpicks. I mean, baby, baby, baby. Nice. Remember you, showed, you showed that a week or two ago? I thought you'd make it look sad. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. Always believe that somebody is watching. <laughs> and uh, play around again. And, um, <laughs> That is neat. Yeah, no, that's cute. That looks good. Oh my goodness. Red wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. well, that's cool. Keep playing that's around. Cool. Uh, <laughs> these aren't my ideas, believe me. Uh, like I said from the very beginning, um, I'm a YouTube copycat. All right. I think we all are. It's okay. That's really cute. Well, really, hey, thank you guys. I uh, just like to mm -hmm. say, um, every Thursday morning, I look at my notes. There you go. I have a great time here. Thank you so much, Eddie. Well, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> Always has been. Always has been. Well, well, thank you, sir. No, thanks. It goes, it goes both ways. Yeah. Thanks, Sal. All hey, right, that's good, Stephen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. There he is. Steve. Hello, everyone. I want to uh, <clears throat> show you a couple of ornaments I did. Uh, shout out to uh, uh, Matt Harbor for the uh, ribbon finial. I did a Sputnik. There you go. Sputnik. Very nice, Stephen. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Gift it keeps giving. We may Matt, have to start a ribbon list. It's, mm. it, it, it's such a unique looking uh, uh turn to it Matt that uh you get a lot of compliments with it and it it just looks so much more difficult than it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's know, that's right? the that's the real yeah, beauty so, of it is, is it's it's not that so hard easy. to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it looks good. it looks really hard and and everybody loves them. Yeah. So it's yeah it's cool. So that's one and a shout out to uh Tim Hatch for his uh his idea on the on the ornament. I put I don't think you can see it. I got seashells in here. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. Right. Good. That's Good. Really like, a lot of friends that like the beach. That's a nice. Very nice. Very nice. I, 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 people just they, they got orders coming in for them. They like <laughs> That's so wrong with that. Uh, yeah, sycamore and uh, and walnut. Good. Yeah. Oh. So thanks, Dave. That was a great idea. I got about 30 more to make. 
<laughs> oh. That's it. Thank you. Uh, get well, uh, get well, Mark. Hope good to see you on uh, on the Zoom. Thank you. All right, let's go to Mr. Loose. Hey, Bill. Oh, you're talking like Mickey Mouse. Yep, still. I wish I could do that. Hey, Bill. I'm, let me uh, let, let me go. Let me go to the next guy. Uh, unplug your mic and then plug it back in again. All right, oh, Joaquin, you. you're going to be next. Step. You need to turn your video on, Joaquin. All right. So, uh. My very first customer is a continuing customer, and she orders a uh, an ornament every year. And this year, they had a rough year. She broke her wrist. Her husband and her father-in-law both had hip replacements. So she wanted a snowman to commemorate it. So this is Gimpy the Snowman. And he's hollow so that he doesn't weigh so much. Turned him out of birch. Um, hollowed him, and uh, then I, I had my, my uh, decoration consultant, my wife, uh, <laughs> do a little uh, decoration. We're going to wrap this arm with a um, little bandage uh, kind of sling, but um, I did the, the entire thing with my skew, and there are pins in this arm that are the size of a toothpick, one sixteenth of an inch, that I turned. Uh, I turned the pin for this one and dropped it. And at that point in time, I was just fed up and I said, I'll just use a toothpick. <laughs> but I actually turned uh, one sixteenth inch pins to put the, to assemble the arm that's going in the sling. So he's also gonna get an actual, bring a little twig crutch under this arm. And so that'll commemorate the hip surgeries and then the sling for the broken wrist. So there's <laughs> Gimpy the Snowman. Good deal. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. All right. Thanks, Joaquin. All right. Uh, let's see. I just messaged Bill and told him to go out of the meeting and come back in. So we'll come back to him. In the meantime, we'll go back to Eddie and have a little bit of chit chat on his side here. And then for the rest of us folks that have not displayed any of our returnings for this week or the past week or the past year. And if you would like to get on board and show something off that you've done, put your yeah, name if in you chat. Have, if you have an idea or a tip or a trick or something you've seen tonight, we saw Bob Grinstead do a piece, and really, folks, you'll watch Bob do a demonstration night, and the piece blew up. We got a pretty good demonstration out of it because it's more than just learning what to do. It's what's learning what not to do, and some of the hazards that are going to happen in the shop. So every time we meet, we look at some of these things and see what happens and what we can go through. Uh, and we get some good ideas, and all those ideas go right here on our website, all the demonstrations. Now, get this. I had somebody message me the other day and said, how do I go about getting a hold of all the demonstrations that y'all do? He's a new member. And I guess he's missed the thing that's they're on the website. All of them. Dave Rose doesn't miss a beat. They're all on the website. It's been there. It's the only website in the entire world that has this, like this, for you. And if you wanted something there, if there's something missing there, on our website, you can put it there. You can bring it to us and give it to us. Tonight, we were talking about the index wheel. I saw four different references of how we can get, get all that information on our chat. And most of those references were back to our own website. So if you got something to share, put it in there. Speaking of sharing, there's a lot of IRDs, uh, remote demonstrations that come up. And people charge for these, and some are free. 
but they're all interesting, all extremely interesting. And I try not to miss Doug Millwood because it's a kick. Him and Wayne and a crew all get together and Ruby and all these people. And you're not only just watching one demonstrator, you're watching one demonstrator with the accompaniment of two or three or four or five other demonstrators, all of equal value, all throwing their nickels on the pot at the same time. So if there's something going on, you don't get one guy who's concentrating on his work to try to explain what he's doing. You have somebody else of equal importance, equal talent right there with them that can explain what's going on. They can explain this tool. The best demonstrations I've been to is ones where the fellow doing the demonstrating had a, mod a, a moderator that could stand there and say, he's now going to be using a three-eighths inch bowl gouge. He's got to sharpen such, 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 such. And explain the tool a little bit so the guy turning can concentrate on the turning and you still get the information. Well, that's what happens with Doug Miller. It's amazing. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're telling Doug how to do the job, eh, yeah, that could be, you know. But it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's also a positive because those IRDs are important. And But Bob's, Doug's not an IRD. It's a weekly program. But there's others that do that. If you know of a program like that, a YouTube channel or whatever that we should, we could or should attend, put it in the chat. Let us know where it's at, how we can join. If your club does the, the, does their demonstrations and then broadcast them later on Zoom or post them to a website to where I can go to whatever club and say, hey, last week they were doing Christmas ornaments. Can I watch their demo? Now, it was last week, their club. They put their demo on, on whatever. Yeah. I did that for a club for a long time. I put there the, the week after the demonstration was over, I put it up. Management thought that, well, why would people pay to come to the meetings if they could get it for free? You got to take the nickel out of it. Take the nickel out of it. It's not, there's no nickels. You're sharing. So just because you know a secret doesn't mean you can't tell somebody. Um, so if you, if you have an idea, you want to share something with us, tell us about it. Share it with us. If you know it is a club that will share that will let us watch their demonstrations, come on, let us get in there. There's a whole lot of people that have a lot of time on their hands. I mean, some folks still have a JLB, and they're still going to be there, and they got to sit in front of a computer. You think they want to work all day? Come on. You know, uh, give them a little something, entertain them. Uh, but let's share. Let's get in there. We have some folks popping up here on gallery tonight. Uh, Dane's got to step away to take care of the cat. We've got four or five folks that are up. And uh, we can get uh, maybe Band-Aid Brenda can introduce a couple of folks that we have for gallery tonight. Brenda, can you do that? Can you hear me? I got you, babe. Oh, okay. I'm having a little uh, con computer problem here tonight. Um. I ain't got a clue as to who's next. How about Howard Johnson? Howard. Hey, fine. Hey, everybody. There you go. That ain't Howard. That's Bob. Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> Keep talking, Howard. We had can you. you hear me all right? Hello. Yeah, I heard Howard. <laughs> You're there. Go ahead. Talk. I got Howard. I don't see Howard, but I see a sign. I says, I don't act my age because I've never been this age before. That's true. There you go. <laughs> but anyway, um, our club is going to have their Christmas party here the first part of December, and they've asked all the members to turn um, stuff for table pieces, table centerpieces. So I went ahead and did one. <laughs> this is the one I did. Uh oh Wow. And, I hate when he does this. Look at this. And uh, this is this is all basswood. I saw this. I Every saw this on it. Facebook. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Good stuff. And now uh, start taking stuff off. And then we're going to start taking <laughs> start taking stuff off. There's, there's. I carved these, so anyway, they're layers. So take these off. I just That's amazing. Would take. That's amazing. And then I've got this 
candle holder here. It's going to stand like this. And wow. I, rather than I, last night, I woke up. Well, this morning, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning, wondering what I was going to do with this thing. And I finally decided, well, I'll just try wrapping it with uh, with twine. And so I went out and I, at Michael's and I found some jute, red jute twine. So I wrapped this all this down through here and down here too. If you can see that too as well. And I thought that was kind of a different way of embellishing something, you know. Uh -huh. So, but anyway, it's a uh, I, I turned turned this from the hollowed this from the bottom and then made myself a uh, a template such that I could try to get all of these slots about the same size and the same length. And anyway, it'll hold up. It will hold a one inch can one inch diameter candle up here. I didn't have a candle or I would have put it in there, but anyway, but anyway, what we'll do, we'll put these on the tables and they'll have the, the people that are sitting at the table. will have a drawing and the winner of the drawing will get to take home the centerpiece. So oh. A good idea. I like oh, that. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I do too. That that twine's beautiful. And uh, so anyway, there. Also, we have an auction. Members make stuff and bring it in, and then they have an auction with mem the members bid on it and the guests bid on it. And uh, this time, we got some people coming in that are collectors. So hopefully, they'll bid bid up high. That's one of our main revenue makers during the year is that is that auction, you know, and and Bob showed you a couple of pieces that he's going to give out for the for the auction. But uh, anyway, this is this is something that I really enjoyed doing and it kind of pulled it out of my head. But I don't know where I came up with this idea. But anyway, there it is. And uh, hey, it works. Hopefully somebody will like it. So what, what holds the leaves on? Excuse Howard? me. What? What holds the leaves on? These? Yeah, the flower. They're, 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 it's all bass, bass wood, and it's been, I... Uh, no, what holds them to the main, the body of the thing? Oh, uh, two-sided tape. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought it was magic. Yeah, okay, catch it. I'm a, <laughs> magic? <laughs> I'm a, I, was, I was using Scotch two-sided tape, that clear stuff, but I think I'm going to go to Turner's tape. It's a little bit better. Okay, I didn't see any magnets. I was wondering, it's got to be something. Well, I thought about magnets, but then, nah. you no, know, I'd have to put a magnet on this, and I really nah. didn't want to put magnets on that. No, no, no. Great, you know, nice job. So, anyway. Very nice. Anyway, so, Fantastic. there it is, folks. Yeah. Hopefully, All right. hopefully Thank some, you, Howard. somebody will like that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they will. Great. All right. Thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's go to Chief Morgan. Hey, Chief. You're muted. Hello, there Daniel. We go. There Sorry are. I've been uh, absent, but uh, a friend of mine's trying to get a club together, and he's got a big, robust lathe. So every Wednesday night, I get to go turn on his big lathe. So that's kind of why awesome. I've been absent. But anyway, um, this is a, I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's a ash bowl. It's a, uh, a crotch and there's where the the uh, Natural inclusion. worms have been after it and then uh, there's a the crotch very cool a fly balls <laughs> alien <laughs> so yeah. I'm working on my I'm working on my cuts I'm doing a lot better uh, trying to do less sanding and um, this is a cherry bowl. I did. I was up at four o'clock this morning, so yes. turned this out. That's nice. Wow. So well, I'm get. I'm getting there. Yeah, uh, you are. That's a retirement evolutions. And then um, I had a tree come down, a little maple, soft maple, and it was a a little crotch. So I said, I'm going to make a little plate out of this. Oh, yeah. Pretty. Very nice. So, it's got a splatted carnation in it. Yeah, it's, it was a really <laughs> cool piece. It, it was, um, it had a branch coming off the side, and I said, I'm going to try to turn that. So I did. 
And then uh, here's a piece of walnut. Beautiful. I burnt I burnt the, the edge on the top. Yeah. So nice. Nicely done. Love it. Thanks. That's what I've been doing. So you hey, look good. Good. good seeing you in tonight. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll be here next week if you're here. So it sounds good. Okay, thanks. All right, let's uh, let's go over to Scott. See what he's got going on. Hey, Scott. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little preview of what you're gonna see from me next week, or one of the things you're gonna see. Um, I'm tired of the fine dust in my shop, so I'm taking my thousand dollar dust collector and taking it apart and making it into a cyclone system. It's called a, using a thine baffle. So here's the start of it. I want to show you in stages because I want next week I'll have it together, I hope. So there's your normal section of your your uh, dust collector that would have the bags on the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. I took a white barrel, cut the top out of it. Now this will get a slot cut in it, uh -huh. 270 degree slot. This will get mounted to the top. The motor will be mounted up here against uh, hanging on the wall. With a with a diesel truck filter as a as a micron filter, it's it's good to 16 microns or 16 what they call 16 e, EEA, which is a half a micron filter, and it should eliminate totally eliminate all the fine dust in my shop, and it'll make the system more efficient. Nothing will run through the through the uh, actual blower system itself, except for air. You've eliminated all the processes of running particles, big particles through the fan. When I took this apart, I actually had 16 holes in the fan housing from screws or whatever I sucked up off the floor that caused the holes. Some of them were looked like bullet holes. They were so perfectly round, it was unbelievable. Hmm. So this is just a preview of what I'm going to show, hopefully show the finished product, everything, but maybe the truck filter, I have that on order, and I don't know if it'll be here by Wednesday. I hope it is, but here's just a little preview. So if you guys want to save some space in your shop, get rid of the dust, here's a good way to do it. And I've seen one of these work without the filter on the end. It never collected any fine dust. It was perfectly clean air coming out the end, so... Hopefully mine works as good as that one. So that I just wanted to show a little preview of the steps that you won't see when I start putting it together. So that's all I have. If anybody's got questions, they can ask. Thanks, Scott. That's a good idea. Scott. Got any, hey, hey, got hey, any questions? hey, Scott. For first of all, um, what 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 air uh, uh, collector do you have right now? It's a Jet Eleven Hundred. Uh huh. And uh, the the canister that you're showing right now with that uh, that four or five inch duck coming out. Now, where where did you get that? That that was part of the dust collector. So your bag. Oh, oh so you took it. You, you took it apart already. Yep. This is this is the pieces. So the bag, the top bag would have went here. Right. The bottom bag would go on the bottom, obviously, snap in the bottom. Right. And then. Normally, this would be the coming from the blower to blow into your bag system, right? Mm -hmm. Which makes this very inefficient. The fine dust, actually, you can see it in there. The fine dust is still in the top; it doesn't ever go away. You can't get it rid of it that way. It, it sucks it back up through here, or blows it back up through there. So then it's blowing all over your shop. I uh. I have a very expensive dust bag that's supposed to be down to a 0.3 microns. You can see the dust coming out of it. When, as, soon as, it as soon as you run it for a day or two, you can see the dust coming out, especially if you use it on a sander, anything that's fine dust, it, it doesn't work. Where this now will totally eliminate that problem. Hmm. Scott, there's two things. One is uh, the filter. Air filters are designed for a specific cubic feet per minute. I don't yep. know, know what that is for the truck, but also the bracing on a filter 
that sucks air in is different for the a filter that blows air out. Correct. You might they, have trouble. They, these filters are actually on the turbo side of the the system. So it's pushing air out of the it's pushing excess air out of the turbo. So it's the filters designed okay. for pushing out. And actually, I'm going to have more. I'm going to have a smaller filter, and I'm going to have more surface area in that filter to blow air out of than what my bag has currently. Hmm. Sounds good. Good. I, I'd, I'd love to see you write that up after you get it working and and work it. You know use it for a little while um, see what your final results are yep so yeah. so i'll be able to show yeah. that so on the bottom of the filter one end of the filter has a sealed end and one end is open mm -hmm. so on the on the bottom of the sealed end on the open end i'm actually going to hang a five gallon bucket that if there's any residual dust that it'll fall into that bucket or you can use it to clean the filter black backflow the filter into the bucket Mm -hmm. and empty your bucket and all the all the filters i've seen um there's not a problem and i know two or three guys that have these now and one of one of them runs it on his uh he's got a big belt sander 48 inch wide uh time belt sander that he's that's two stage so the front belt sands at one grit and the back belt is a finished grit and he has absolutely no dust coming out of that machine wow it, wow. it's, it's amazing now somebody just posted i see in chat about the wind filter wind filters are super expensive so are the donaldson filters if you uh search this out on youtube there's some guys that have done these on youtube so you can get a rough idea how to do it um the wind the donaldson and the wind filters are super expensive you can go to your local parts house and get a cross-reference filter to to uh, a diesel truck, and you can buy them locally for about half the price. So they also clean them, don't they? You can clean those. That is correct. They're out, they are cleanable for up to five times. I think my mechanic buddy who works on diesel trucks says you can clean them up to five times before they lose their ability to be clean mm -hmm. or efficiency. It's actually efficiency, but they're they're made for for keeping materials out of a turbo. Hmm. Hey, Scott. Yeah. Are you are you changing your blower um, fan? No, I am not. Okay. The, the blower fan, actually, a lot of the YouTube videos I watched on the Grizzly machines and the Harbor Freight machines that people done this to them, they actually go by the fan for a jet and install it in those machines because the fan is better yeah that's that's what i'm looking at okay but if you have a jet already you don't need to change the fan yeah, unless you want to I, I, I would see the purpose what are you making the uh, cyclone portion out of scott so so the barrel is is going to be the cycle is going to be part of the cyclone this piece of wood that's in here is going to have a slot cut in it an inch and a half wide at, and 270 degrees around the, the barrel itself. This will fit over that slot. And then uh, that's that's your actual cyclone system. So it's called a thine baffle and it creates a cyclone and doesn't let the dust come back up through a center hole because it can't. There's no way for it to come back up. Okay, All so you have a you don't have another layer. There's only that that one layer for the cyclone. You don't have a one Correct. down below. Okay. Yep. It, it doesn't have a, a cyclone it is it in what you see like in an Oneida system. Right, right. So, some of the things I've been reading, and, and the reason I'm building this is because a friend of mine owns a company that builds um, systems for chip plants for blowing chips and stuff around to make wafer board. Yeah. And that and that's who the engineer behind this is for me. He uh, designed this for me to to work with my particular parts for the airflow. That's how I got the filter surface area figured out. Mm -hmm. But but you don't have to do that. There's a lot of stuff out on the internet. And when I I'll post 
on the website what filter I used and where I got it once I receive it and make sure that it works correctly. But how much do you think that filter is? Uh, I think I paid $72 with the shipping. Uh -huh. And I and I bought it through one of the local parts stores here, one of right. the diesel parts stores here in my hometown. Yeah, and and it doesn't get dirty very very dirty, and even at that you can clean it, right? Right. You just you just take a, uh, like a dust blower, you know, like a cordless blower, and blow it out. Take it outside, leave it on the bucket, and blow it out. Yeah. Great. And and you don't really have to do that because, um. What I've seen, you're not getting any dust out of the back end of the system at all. Yeah. Hmm. It, it, yeah, they, they don't. Yeah, you know, it doesn't let a whole lot of dirt out of them. You know, even the Oneida stuff. I mean, it's uh, yep. very, very few fine particles come out of it. So, so one of the biggest problems with with the Oneida style system for what we do is they like to plug up because we don't run a heavy enough material through them. Those, those bigger cyclones want heavier material, like a, like an industrial type setting. If you were, our, our runs in our shops aren't big enough to handle, to feed that machine correctly. You follow what I'm saying? Something like Mr. Yeah. Duxbury's shop where it's big and spread out and you got a lot of piping and you can have multiple gates open at a time, the cyclone works good. It doesn't work so good on one or two gates at a time. Hmm. It it doesn't like that. It needs more airflow than that. It needs more suction than that. Yeah. Heavier material, I guess, is the correct word, or that's how it was explained to me. Hmm. When you when you have these small machines, you're actually better off having isolated small fine baffles. They they're more efficient. All right. Well, good deal. Yeah, you have to show us when you get it done. And and it's and it's all made out of three quarter inch plywood that you can buy at your home center. It's not like you got to have anything special and we all can cut circles. Sure. You know, you could cut them on the bandsaw. The hardest part is cutting the interior circle. If you only have a bandsaw to cut your exterior circle. Yeah. But I bought a miles craft circle cutting jig and boy, it worked. It's great. It was the best 40 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> yeah. Go on your router. And I have it on my router, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are easy to make, too. Yeah, you could make one if you didn't want to buy this one. I, I just bought this one because it looked like it was a good good value. And it so far, it's worked out great. Good. Well, ho sure. hopefully you guys get, a, get to see some how it works next week. I hope to have it done and hooked yep. up to one machine anyways. Sounds That's good. all I got, Scott. Dan. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to let's go, to Mr. Domac. Glenn, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. A uh, friend of mine from church wanted me to make him some uh, little spice spice bowls for his wife for Christmas. So these are about four inch diameter. This one is out of uh, this one's out of uh, Hackberry. With a with a hackberry lid on it, then yeah. I had a, then I had another one. This one's out of uh, uh, pecan. And the same with same with the lid, about four inch diameter. Then I did another one. This one's uh, a cherry bowl. This one's out of cherry. Wow. And but I didn't have no cherry that size, so I just made the lid out of. Uh, the lids out of uh, mesquite. Okay. And then I had another, another one, a little smaller one. This is uh, so. This is about three and a half inch diameter. This one's out of oak. This is from uh, I'm not sure what kind of oak it is, but it was it was from the it's from my uh, front yard tree. I trimmed it a couple wow. of years ago, and so I have those. And then. For a Christmas gift, I'm making a it's a uh, potpourri bowl, and uh, this one's out of uh, this one's out of cedar. Love it! Oh, my. And I left the left the inclusions in, inside, and that's a really 
really nice, uh, uh, yeah. nice grain to it. Mm -hmm. And then I had turned, I had uh, watched uh, Carl Jacobson turning a an ornament, and I turned this uh, a live edge, this ornament, and I had turned. Then I had turned the uh, the finial for it, and and the little finial on top, and I had turned turned this one. But then I wasn't wasn't sure if I wanted to leave it like that. So I uh, <laughs> I put a, another turned another finial on it and make it a bird make it a birdhouse. So <laughs> I haven't figured out which one it's gonna be. It looks almost too big for the for the finial, so it may end up being uh, uh, the birdhouse. <laughs> and the and the roofs out of uh, out of oak, and the uh, uh, the birdhouse is mesquite, and the bottom part is uh, out of walnut. It was going to be once just all mesquite, but then I ended up having a hole in it, so I ended up putting uh, putting walnut on the uh, on the bottom. So nice I'll have safe. either either it's going to be either a birdhouse or an ornament, one or the other. That's gorgeous. That's all I have. All right. That's great. Good stuff. Glenn. Those are great, Greg. Glenn, nice work. Okay. Thanks. Mine's well, been busy. Yeah, I have a lot of lot of lot more Christmas stuff to do yet, too. So oh my. Then staying busy. All right, let's go back and see if Mr. Luce came back in. Bill, are you out there? Well, let's go to Joaquin. I know he's got to have something. Hey, Joaquin. Hey there. <laughs> yeah, um, been busy with Christmas stuff. I'm late this year. I really haven't got a lot done or a lot going on, but uh, um, I really enjoy turning these uh, leaning Christmas trees. <laughs> uh, this one's out of hang. Bent tree. That is pretty. Yeah. These are five sections. They're about... Uh, Three quarter inch offset on. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love making these, Joaquin. Those are those are great. <laughs> Thank you. Then I got adventurous. I went to a seven section inch and a half offset on it. Oh my! Yeah. And one thing you cannot get these, you can't do these points in the lathe on that last turn. You got to leave you a, a pretty get it. You can shape it on this side, but then you've got to take and get your carving tools, grinders, and portums, and, and shape it for it to look anything like that. You can't get that on the lathe at all. But uh, I'm behind. I really got to get busy. That's how far I've got so far. Uh -huh. Doing a few of them natural edge uh, ornaments. Uh, it's been fun doing them. Yeah. You got to spend less time goofing off, Joaquin. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, yeah. for something, I ain't as fast as I used to be. What's the deal? Is that what it is? Or maybe I never was fast. <laughs> Just realizing what I am. I don't know. It's fun, though. Thank you. If you like me, it's the, all the trips to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Golly, we've had a had a really great gallery this evening, Eddie. Boy, have we? I mean, it's some really fantastic items come pop up, and that's what we look for. We look for seeing you folks to come in there, and like Joaquin said, it's running out of time. We always run out of time before Christmas. Every year before Christmas, we wish we had just one more pass. Yeah. And, uh, Joaquin, I'm wearing that shirt out, that just one more pass shirt. I'm wearing yeah. it out. <laughs> I get a lot of comments about that. Fantastic. Uh, Thank you. But you know, we always come up with things to, to come to, to to turn and do and give away. Is it time to I know you do a lot of craft sales, folks, and I, I support that. I really do. Uh, but remember when you go someplace for holidays, leave a little something behind. Just a little trinket. And uh, like we saw Kelly Charles showed us the little medallions that he's turning. 
that's an interesting demonstration. And when we, it was popping up on Facebook this week, somebody said, but we've seen that before. Let me tell you something. You can show me a demonstration today. And then tomorrow, Bob can show me a demonstration. And the day after, Garrett can show me a demonstration. Do you know I've seen three different techniques? Not three different demonstrations, three different techniques. Because I can see one held between centers. I can see one held on a vacuum center. I can see one held with uh, d- double, stick, double, uh, double stick tape. Yeah. And all three of them accomplished the same item. But all three of them had different ways of doing it that didn't require any special equipment, any gadgets or doohickeys. You didn't have to go to the big book and find a special gizmo to do it. You made it in your own shop. And if you made it in your own shop, next Wednesday, we want to see it. Meeting number 217, we want to see what happens in your shop, what you came up with. See, I said that on double stick tape. Double stick tape does wonders for medallions. But you can make a jig for double stick tape. Uh huh. It's like a little face block. It's got a little you know, uh-huh, double stick tape, but don't use that sure tight, sure tight tape and put a whole strip on it. You can't get it off. I mean, it, it double stick. It really double sticks. Um, and then a vacuum chuck. Make them up for a vacuum chuck. That's almost bulletproof turning. That really is. You can do a vacuum chuck through a Duxbury jig. Yes. Uh huh. Play with it a little bit. Think of. Let's think it through. And that's what we get together. That's it. You know, you see these things. That we get jigs and rigs and ideas thrown out there. And what I rely on is when when I see something pop up, like that thing we saw last week with the saw, the 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 Dremel in a in a chop saw type thing. I was right then and I was thinking. What is Billy Burt going to do with that idea? <laughs> really? I, I can imagine. And, and I saw a picture of Billy Burt on Memorial Day, uh, on Veterans Day the other day. He's about that thick. Look, I mean, he, he, really, it wasn't Billy. We know, but that big. Um, and uh, But he takes it and he, he, he puts it right there and he says, hey, wonder what I can come up with. Well, that's why we sit here every week, folks. Not just chewing a fat and lying and showing toys and all. We come up with the idea as brain games. What Keen Vincent said a few minutes ago, we see things that happen and we think, what can I do with that? Right. Uh, Matt Harbour, a while back, a month and a half, two months ago, showed us a nice finial. Yeah, a nice finial. And it had a little twist to it. How many have we seen? Yeah, you know, it's hard to even be around Matt with his head so big right now. He's all pumped up. You know why? Because he took something that came from his shop and he showed us how we can take something like that and we can expand on it and we can play with it. And then then he really got crazy. Really. He went and got the colors and all. And now you, you are you ready for this? I'm pretty sure I looked over his shoulder today. He's got an idea for those decals. Out of the printer machine on those twistums. Yeah, yeah, yeah huh? <laughs> Throwing out that Matt, you should have locked the door. You should have locked the door. That's all I'm telling you. This is this is an open door tailgate for everybody, kind of the room for everybody on the tailgate kind of place, man. Yeah. <laughs> you see, man. you see, you, see, you get these Social ideas. Club with a turning problem. Yeah, you get <laughs> all these little ideas about how to make it thinner and trimmer. Billy came up with see what Billy did. Yeah, I wanted it thinner and trimmer and light and all that. And and the, the embellishments and lines and the detail work. We keep playing with that and we keep taking ideas that you, our wood turners, our members, our creators, come up with and we twist it and twist it and twist it. And you don't get to do that anywhere else. And every Wednesday night we gather just with you so we can do that. Boy, this this you make my week. You really do, because just like Terry and 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 a couple other guys, I'm terrible with names, y'all know that, um, said on Thursday morning, they got the notebook. They're going through the notebook. 
and they look, man, you know what I saw last night? And everybody's learned how to do screen captures. I mean, it was well, my screen capture thing has probably got 300 photographs on 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 Thursday morning where I got to go through and look at pictures I've saved that we came through because these are thought provoking. They're like, all right, I want to take a good hard look at that because I got to see how he created this. And I, I, first I got to ask my, my mama, how did he hold it? Really? You know, how did he, how did he get there? And what's the mechanics of holding something to get to that point and then turning it and then finishing it? And then what can I do if I got that far? What can I do with your idea? Remember, I'm cheating on your idea, okay? I'm copying exactly what you did. At least I think it's exactly what you did. I'm taking that idea, and I'm going to twist it to my idea. That's flattery. That's flattery. I'm not copying your work. I'm taking your idea and putting it in my head and seeing what will come out. Same thing as jackets and clothes and pants and shirts. They don't copy each other. They're just different versions of, the, of an idea. So when you have a ver an idea of a version, we want to see what you can do. And when you do it, bring it to us. We want to see it because I might not have really thought about that. I mean, and when, when you look at some of these things we've come up with, some of the ideas we've seen, some of the projects that pop up, you, you just stop and think, where did that come from? And that's why we're here. So, folks, I'm glad you joined us this week. If we can help you in any way whatsoever, get a hold of us through our website. And if we can help you, let us know. If you got an IRD or whatever, put it in the chat. And let us know what's happening. You got an event that's dealing with wood turning. No matter who does it, where it's at, who puts hey, it on. Tell us about our tell us about our contact list. How somebody could get a hold of you, or how somebody could get a hold of me, or. Well, we don't have a others. membership list. We we do we do because we don't really have a membership. It's a well, except for the entire world. But I hey, we have a list of folks who wish to be contacted, who would like to be contacted, who want to share your information. This is how we do this because it's what you want to share is will be shared in the chat right now. Go over to the chat. Type in I'm Captain Eddie Castle. I live in Old Jefferson, Louisiana. My phone number is really right now. I couldn't tell you what my phone number is. I got to look it up. But you know, and here's my email address, my website. I, I have a Facebook page, and this is what I do. And this is, a, and I put out whatever I want to tell you. I put in that chat right there. Boom. Now, suppose you don't say the chat, but you want it. Guess what, folks? We got the world's greatest webmaster, a guy named Dave Rhodes. He handles this thing. It's the greatest website he ever put together for turning. It's all there. On it, it says contact. You go to contact, say members list. Go to members list, get a little form, a little entry form. All right. Fill out that form exactly, exactly as it asks. When you get the subject, type in captain, C A P T A I N, capital C, A P T A I N. Type that in. Doug, uh, David picked that out um, and then submit it within moments moments you will get a return email with the current version of the membership list the member list I'm using the wrong term it's a contact list and that's everybody in the club that has said I'd like to be on your contact list and I'd like you to be able to folks let me know you want to get a hold of Tim Hatch and talk about this. You want to get a hold of Dave, uh, Dane, and get lined up for a demonstration. You want to talk to Mark Soleil about going to go get his lumber that he's closing out. You you want to get a hold of Brenda, or Sue, or Dennis, or Scott, or anybody else. They if they put their name on a contact list, it's there. Feel free to do it. Please don't share our contact list. It's friend to friend. We just want to be friends. So if you need to get a hold of us. That's how you do it. Be sick out of pan a buck, doesn't it? It's just friends being friends. On the tailgate, out in the parking lot, just like we promised. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Like I say, 
You make my week. I hope we'll help you with yours. I'll see y'all next Wednesday. And look, bring that brain stuff. We waiting for you next week. You got stuff we want to know about. Come on. See you Wednesday night. Y'all take care. And above all else, words of safety soup. Be safe. And according to Donald in Australia, save the chat. And I'll see y'all next Wednesday. Bye. 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 Bye.